here is a special dedication to everyone who has a vision and is going through things that make you think you won't get there. This song is for you. When I look into the world I see my dream lane But it's far from me now And it's getting farther Many have gone through this lane They have stories to tell Some are good and some are bad But I've made up my mind That my story will be pleasant And pleasing to hear In front of the mirror Wondering if I'll ever make it Cause of things happening around me And then I heard this little voice say to me My child, you're going to make it excited to be live with you guys this is this is dear to my heart and i am so 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 delighted to have you here today on this beautiful 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 saturday morning thank you thank you thank you for joining i see um a couple of people i see two people online so please as you join 
I would like to engage with you in the comment section, okay? So as you join, right, um, because we're using StreamYard, it's going to ask you, if you're using Facebook, for example, or I don't know about YouTube, but if you're streaming on Facebook, for example, you need to sort of um, allow it to show your name, okay? So allow it to show your name so that I can see your name in the comment section and I'm able to, um, you know, shout out at you, and engage with you in the comment section. I am so, so excited. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the NOP Summit, which is the Narrators on Purpose Summit. Now you wanna ask, why Narrators on Purpose? I mean, as the name implies, we are narrators, and we and this is not just uh, streamlined only to audiobooks, because if you know me, you will know that I'm into the production of audiobooks for African authors. But NOP is not just about audiobook. It talks about narration. There is a narrative to the African community, to the African continent, to the African people. Hi, Irene Zaytalius. Thank you so much for being here. I see you. I see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right? So it's not just about narration of audiobooks. It's about changing the narrative for Africa, you know, by us, the African people. And so this cut across to singing your voice using basically using your voice singing speaking what are you saying what are you speaking what is your story what are you sharing right and then in singing what are you singing what message are you passing across with your song and then comes to story what kind of stories are you telling what does it say about the african continent right and then you know even you uh, um, um, um like it just goes across like sharing your stories using podcasts as well I'm a podcaster too, using YouTube channel. So I call myself a media practitioner. And so I'm basically, you know, around talking about, you know, how to share people's story. Like people's story inspire me a lot. And so I'm just positioned to share, 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 and share because you never can tell. Like your answer to that question in your heart can be in the sharing of somebody else. And somebody else's answer can be in the sharing of your own story. And so, which is why I just want to be here to position as that person who will push you to share your story. So welcome to Narrators on Purpose. And we are doing this purposefully. We are sharing it on purpose. So we want to yeah, make the narration um, um, positive and actually tell the true story of Africans and Africa. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you join, please do well to... Um, say hi in the comment section. Would like to make this an engaging session. And we have a load. We have a lineup of amazing speakers, all of them dear to my heart. Like, <laughs> I feel so privileged, so loved, and so, so grateful to have all of these amazing people say yes to this to come share their wealth of knowledge. And as you watch as well, please. I would indulge you to kindly share the link with your friends. Yes, it's okay that they didn't register to be here. It's okay. It's a free summit anyways, but share it to them so that they are able to be part of this, okay? Let me even take a minute to also share on my personal Facebook page. I know I've shared on my status, but I need to also share on my Facebook page. So give me a minute and I'm going to do that and we can kick this off. My First speaker is already set. Like I can see her looking all glam. It's like, it's, it's as if we called each other to say, babe, let's rep Africa today. Like, I mean, let's go home. Let's show, let's show them that we love us. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about preparing for this? I'm like, okay, what do I want to look like? What do I want to look like? I actually wanted to put on a dress, a gray, simple dress. I'm like, come girl, you're talking Africa. You got to show Africa. So I'm all here showing up my prints, my Ankara. Don't I look beautiful? <laughs> guys, guys, I'm super excited that you can see it on my face and in my voice and in my inflections and in my energy, right? That's why I'm called the energetic energy. I've got so much energy and I just want to pass it, you know, along to everybody that I meet. So um, just give me one minute. Let me share this on my Facebook uh, page. Please do the same if you can. God bless you. I appreciate you. Um, one minute. I'm almost there.
Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Correct. Done. Done. <laughs> All right. I'm good. So I am going to be introducing our first speaker for the day. Um, give me a minute. I'm going to be introducing our first speaker for the day. And let me just, I want to get how to buy it. Don't mind me. I, I thought I have, I had it. Okay. So I'm going to be introducing our speaker for the day. Who is somebody that I, 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 I admire so much. Like if you have not read Ufoma's book before, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what to say to you. Really, I don't. But it's okay. Maybe you have not met her before, so it's understandable. It's excusable. But now that you are meeting her, you should go get her books. You should. And and she's so, so she's so gracious that she has a couple of her books that are free, so you can go to her website and check them out. Like she's a storyteller. Oh my god, that woman is good. For our first story I read, I was crying. Like, how come, how can somebody write like this? I mean, I'll be struggling with writing. <laughs> Our stories are so real. I had to reach out to her, like, come, this cannot be fiction. They said the truth. Is it, is it real? Like, because it was so real. Like, and I could, I was like, wow. Some people are blessed. Ufoma is one of them. So I'm going to be introducing Ufoma, who is a writer, a blogger, a Christian fiction author. She tells stories to help young people make the right choices before marriage and, um, and deal with challenges that often arise during and after marriage, okay? So she also uses parables and poetry to teach about God's love. When she's not working or writing, she loves to watch action movies and rom-coms on Netflix. <laughs> And she also loves reading romantic and inspiring books by other amazing authors. I said she's big on that one. And she will even give reviews. She's just an amazing human being, right? She reviews them on her blog. And her blog is www.ufomaee.blog. I'm going to be scrolling it on the screen pretty soon, as soon as she comes on board, okay? With uh, Jesus joy, <laughs> with excitement in your heart. I wish I could see the comment section. I can't see them. I can't see them. Guys, don't fall my hand, please. Come on, put it in the comment section, emojis and saying, yay, our first speaker is coming up and I'm gonna bring her up in about three, two, one, and boom. Oh my God. <laughs> Energetic EJ indeed. Hi everyone. Hi, good morning, Ufoma. Thank you so much for being here. I am so delighted it's to have you pleasure. here. Okay, Thanks so guys, oh, yeah, thank you. I see you, Arinze. Thank you so much. See, Arinze is the one showing the, the he, he's in the spirit. He's in the spirit. Uh uh. Okay, I'm beginning to see my people show up. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, I see you. I see you see entrance, of course. Okay, so I'm just going to disappear right now and let Ufuma take the stage for the next ah. about to 20 minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so take it away, Ufuma. Thank you so much for being here. Just do your thing and I'll be in the back seat, just cheering you up and I'll come up as soon as you are done. All righty. 20 minutes. <laughs> Great. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. So um, as he just told you, I'm an author, and uh, I write mostly Christian fiction books that deal with uh, romance, marriage, love, stuff like that. Um, and as a writer, I've learned that... Um, all writing is really just answering questions, you know. So I think that is the secret to being a really good storyteller is preempting the questions that people want answers to and giving them answers, you know. You know, and when you're trying to tell a story, you ask, you're answering questions like, what's happening? Why did that happen? Why did she do that? 
what does they what do they mean where is this going what's the lesson so those type of questions as you as you continue to write and develop your story you're going to find that there are constantly questions to answer and a good storyteller doesn't leave hold in what they're telling you come out of it feeling like you received a lot you've learned a lot you know you've got a lot of questions answered and some storytellers leave answers for you to go and discover so that's not too bad but the main thing is you trying to you've got to know what you want to say you've got to know what it is that you're trying to deliver and the next step is how do you do it how do you communicate your message in the best way some people do it through poetry some do it through music some do it through film and you know podcasts blogs and i use books i write stories fictional stories mainly yeah, you've got to know what to say. But when I was thinking about it, what really, what really is the art of a storytelling? I thought about my stories. And I thought about what makes my stories unique. What is it when I'm writing a story? What are the things that are important for me? You know, um, so number one, I think, is honesty. A good, good story is honest. It taps into the truth. It taps into, you know, something that people can connect with, something that people can believe, something that is naked, you know, and is vulnerable. So if you're trying to run away from the truth, you're not trying to address it, you know, people will tell that when they're reading what you're writing and it's not going to connect. So a, a story that is honest will have a lot of people nodding, oh, wow, yeah, that's so true. You know, um, a story that, you know, just speaks the truth will convict people, will challenge people. So I think for me, that's what you find in my story. And I think that that makes for good, really good storytelling. Number two is boldness. For you to actually speak honestly and to deal with some really hard stuff, you've got to have some boldness. You've got to be ready to go there. You know, you've got to be ready to be that person that talks about that thing and without being afraid about it, you know. And you've got to communicate it in a way that people can't hide from the truth. It's there in black and white. You just put it out there for them, you know. So it's, so you've got to be bold. It takes a bold person to do that, you know, someone who's not afraid. Okay. And then number three, you've got to have imagination. You know, as much as you're speaking the truth, you know, you've also got to take people, you've got to, you've got to go somewhere. You've got to, you've got to do the what if. What if this happened? You know, so yes, you start off with the truth, but you're trying to play stories, good stories answer that what if question a lot. They take you somewhere. They can always bring you back, but they explore your imagination. They get you thinking outside the box. You know, it's not just typical story that, you know, you can just see every day. It's one of those like, damn, this is strange. Yes, what if this happened? What would I do? You know, what you know, what would I tell someone to do if that happens to them? You know, so and number four is reality, bringing it home. Yes, you've explored some maybe some some outlandish or some weird possibilities but you also want to bring it home make it connect with reality so number four is reality your story's got to be real yes a bit like honesty but real like relatable you know yeah so maybe not too typical but definitely relatable something that anyone reading your story will think this could be me you know are they talking about me you know, I, yeah, I do that sometimes, or I think that sometimes, I feel that sometimes, you know, oh, that happened to my friend, you know, so yeah, reality is very good, and you really, you're really connecting with your readers, they're engrossed in your story, you know, they can't tell truth from fiction anymore, even though you already put some imagination into it, they cannot tell, oh my god, is this real? <laughs> 
And um, yeah, if you read my stories, you're going to come across um, controversy, which is number five for me. You know, um, and I guess that is still some of the boldness thing. Um, yeah, it's some people like to just be sweet with it and just tell something that doesn't really shake anybody, you know, but you got to shake the table if you want to make a difference, you know, so you, you've got to, you've got to address that issue that people are running away from, you know, especially if you have some connection with it, you know, um, put your voice on the table on that issue. So controversy makes really good storytelling. <laughs> yeah, don't be scared to be controversial. And like a good story has conflict. You ask, you might ask, what's the difference between controversy and conflict? Controversy is like you know big issues that affect all of us in society. A story that addresses conflict, like when you tell a fictional story, you know there's something that happens. There's, there's a problem that needs to be solved within the story, and that's the conflict. If there is no problem in the story and everybody just they live happily ever after, they wake up, sun shining, and ain't nothing going on, what are you reading? Like, people are like, oh, please, this is boring. Conflict makes it a little interesting. It makes you think, okay, this is weird. This, this happened. Oh, my God, what are they going to do about it? You know, how do you resolve this? You know, are they going to be happy again? Are they going to get over it? So every good story needs conflict, yeah. So in addition, I've I've got my list here and I just kind of lost it. Hold on. Yes, yeah, so every good story needs conflict, and then we need a resolution. That's number seven. We need a resolution. We don't want to end a story on conflict. Remember, you're answering questions when you introduce conflict. There's going to be lots and lots of questions. Why did she do that? What was she thinking? What was he thinking? Oh my God, what is he going to do? What is she going to do? Do you understand? So there's so many questions that need to be answered. And that those get answered during the resolution of the story. Asking for forgiveness, saying sorry, or, you know, or coming across, learning a lesson. Even if you don't actually come together again. The resolution might just be you learned the lesson from your experience and you can move on, you know. Um, so there has to be resolution. So a good story. So I'm talking now, like, if you're writing for, or as an author, a fictional book, you know. So I have three other points that I, I added to it. And I think they connect with what the type of stories that I write, um, stories about faith. So um, point eight is hope. You know, um, I think good stories should give people hope. They should inspire people. You know, if the story is just hopeless and you end up reading the story and it's like, oh my God, what has happened? I'm so depressed afterwards. You know, it's, it, yes, you might have had a bit of fun reading it, but not down there, it's not going to be good. You need something to give person the hope that things can be better. Yes, this world is shit. I've shown you this world is so bad, but there is hope because of this, you know. And the hope we have is in Christ, and that is that comes across the stories that I tell. Um, and then there's faith in your stories. I find it very important. Uh, resolution includes purpose. Um, let me think on that. I wasn't thinking along that angle, but uh, I'll come back to that. Um, so faith is, yeah, it sounds a bit like hope, but faith is actually kind of like hope in action. Um, yeah, so faith is number eight, nine. So faith has you doing, not just believing, not just hoping. It has, it has you taken steps, you know, as, uh, has you showing obedience, you know, and that is very important for us to get to the resolution that we want, you know, for us to, for us to trans take our story from, from fiction into the reality. We've got to apply faith 
to connect it with our own life. And the last but not least is love. Love, love, love. Everybody loves love. You know, and love is like what is the greatest. Love never fails. That's what the Bible teaches us. And so from everything that we've learned, everything we want to teach in the story, in the story it all boils down to the, the biggest message of all, which is love. That's just the biggest message. The, the sacrifice that love is. The compassion that love shows. The, the righteousness that is love, that is our true desire in our heart to be clean, you know. So, so ultimately, when you want to tell a story, what is your message? What are you trying to say? How best can you say it? You know, where do you want to take your readers to? How are you going to connect with your readers? Um, so I, I find that... Um, um, every every question that you answer when you're telling a story is just to clarify your message, just to make it clear, just so that people don't read it and they feel like they're confused afterwards. When they read this story, they're enlightened. They've got something from it. Your faith is charged. And they feel like they feel connected and they feel like they can do something with their lives. They can make a difference as well. That, in fact, your story actually influences someone else to want to tell their story. That's how a good story works. Because they get so much from your story. It, it, it tickles their, the things inside them to begin to want to share their story. And storytelling, I find, is very healing. It's, um and it's a good, it's a good way, it's a good therapy, you know, um, because you're, you're, like I said, you're dealing with honesty, you're bringing out the truth, you're, you're, you're breaking down your fears, you're, you're telling it like it is, you're addressing issues of conflict, you're, yeah, you're connecting with people. So someone asked about the resolution and purpose. Um, I think. Ultimately, like I ended with number 10 being love. Love is the purpose. Um, resolution is the way to love. Um, resolution requires some humility on both sides, so at least on one side. <laughs> um, resolution requires, you know, learning. You know, so resolution is a path to love. You know, so... Um, but love is the purpose. Um, I don't think I've used 20 minutes. Uh, let me um, think. It, do, do people have more questions? Must all stories have a love message? No hate or anything. But it's a story of, it's a, it's a story of pain. You must get to see and feel it from the world. Yeah, there, there are stories that are dark. You know, um, there are stories that touch on pain and you are just right now where you are is honesty you are still at the beginning it's not at the end at the beginning you're dealing with the honesty of the cruelty of the world the pain you're feeling the anger in your heart you know that's all honesty and and then boldness and then you're bringing in the imagination all that but at the end of the journey the, the story cannot be over like that like I said, even if it ends your resolution and you don't actually go back together or you don't, your resolution can be what you learn. And that, what you learn will give you hope for the future, right? What you learn cannot be something depressing that will leave you to go and go and hang yourself now. What you learn has to give you the, what you need to continue to live. And you need hope to continue to live. And when you have hope, you then have faith. And ultimately, when you exercise faith, you're going to end on love. So um, I don't know if you got that. But it's but really addressing the pain. I have a lot of stories that deal with pain. You know, um, like my story, The Naive Wife, for example. That, that story was very uh, 
has some dark tones on it. It's very real, you know. But ultimately, the last book is Rachel's Hope because we need that. We need, we need to end on positivity if we want to inspire the world. Mm. Mm. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Guys, can you please put it together for Ufoma EE? Me, I have a question though. So you said that the uh, your story must have like must end with the resolution, like the resolution must end with the resolution and love and all of that. But I, I think I, I'm, I'm I think I must have read some stories that just kept us hanging. What do you have to say about that? I think Chimamanda is good at that. Which like, story is that? <laughs> Which story is that? I, uh, when I read... Death was past. It's, fine. It's, a, it's a dark story that I wrote that ended on a bad note. And I just left it like that. You know, I'm just saying this is not even you. This is not your story. I'm just saying that there are authors who just leave the people hanging. Like, it's just, okay, what's going... Like, yeah, okay, I know what one of how... Chimamanda. Yeah, no, like Chimamanda <laughs> does that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, what's what's your take um, on that as a writing? I feel like like my review of her like was that her stories leave you wanting. Do you understand? Yes, she has shown like she has really shown mm-hmm. the 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 state of the world, and she has addressed a lot of honest issues. A lot of issues honestly she's really spoken the truth you know and but her stories rarely leave anybody with hope i haven't i don't know i've only read two mm. stories, i can't talk for all of them but the two stories i read True. didn't leave me with much hope you just let me feeling damn, damn. <laughs> you know and yes yeah, there's some people who you know i'm not saying that's bad but i feel like if if she had done all that and you got that damn and then she now brings it home with the hope that story is five stars all Mm. around because she has shown the she's shown the wick she's shown everything but then she now brings it back to what we all truly desire the hope the peace the opportunity Mm -hmm. that you understand it's not lying to people because the truth of the matter is however bad the world is, there are people who are living it and they're enjoying their lives. There are people, you know, True. and sometimes you want to say they're doing it because they are doing it on the backs of other people, but no, not really. Not everybody who's happy is, on, is mm. being happy at the expense of someone else, you know. Yeah. You know yeah. So just finding a yeah, way. Just finding a way to yeah, it's find a way to inspire people to justify what's going on in their lives and in the world. Still hang on to hope, faith, and love. Yeah. So, um, yes. yeah, as you can be as dark as you want to be, you can be as real as you want to be, but at the end of the day, bring it home. Bring it home. Bring when you bring someone to Christ, for example, stories I write to bring to Christ. You can't just leave them in darkness. Can't leave them mm. with so many questions. You've got to when you bring them to the feet of Christ, that's where the light is shining, and that's when the hope and the faith and love. Do you understand? I don't okay, think every story has to end in love. The resolution can be partial, cliffhanger, or full. But every good story should take you on a journey. The journey is the cocoa. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> it's good. It's good. The journey is the cocoa. The journey is the cocoa. Uh, but I'll tell you, there's a story I read recently. Yeah, and the journey was was good, and it did end positively. But there was something about the journey that was like, by the time it ended, I was like, was because this? it was just too long. There's a, there's a time that you've got to. <laughs> okay, you you, you you harassed us enough. <laughs> you you your harassed you. us enough. <laughs> Give us peace. Give us peace. <laughs> you know. Um. So timing, timing, and structure is very important. You know. Yeah, 
an imagination as good as it is, reality it needs to balance the reality. You know, mm. it needs to still balance reality. Otherwise, people are going to as air. You know, you want people think- to be like, wow, <laughs> really? Oh my God, it happened. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, like what Remy says, says, I don't think stories ending in resolution don't portray real life because there are many things in life that won't get resolved. I think that's also that's also true because yeah, because sometimes like yeah it, it feels like it's an um it's an ongoing story. So for example, we're writing about somebody who is still alive, the story has not ended, so you never can tell what is going to end. So I feel like if you write from that angle, not ended. yeah, yeah. And in fact, even if it's a true story and it ended on a bad note, maybe person got killed or or went to jail or they died, you know, even if it's a true story and it ended on a bad note, it that, that's, that's life. It it's true. Yeah. It's true. We yeah. do have situations. Not everything is positive. And I think that's why I left that story. So death was part on a negative note. Like, yeah. It happened. It happened. But... <laughs> I'm telling you that story as as mad as it was because it did not end on a positive note because I did not bring it home. That is my one of my least greatest stories. Do you understand? Mm. So the fact of the matter, you have to realize people want that hope. People want that. Well, I think I think in that in that in that regard, maybe because people are used to your style of writing and so they are expecting or they were expecting a happy ending and then it's happening. What happened to for my note? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, maybe maybe you, if so. I was used to writing stories like that, it would have been a five star. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. You never can tell. Thank yeah. you so much for Foma. Um, Arinze says it's been thank insightful. Um, Ora says thank you. She gets it now. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you guys in the comment section. You guys are amazing. I love you guys. Thank you for my um. If people want to connect with All you, right, how- bye. thanks for having me. Um, I'm on Instagram at Ufuma EE. Um, mm-hmm. My blog has already been mentioned, um, but you can get all my books to read, free ones and ones that you could contribute some pens to at books.ufumaee.org. Mm, okay. So books are all there. Books.ofama.ee.org. I need to write that. So I've got some free books there, and I've got ones that are paid for. Um, okay. And my link to all my platforms, you'll find them on my website. You say books.ofama.ee.org. Yeah, on a, yeah. Okay. Any problem connecting with that? No, 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 no. Just wanted to scroll it on the screen so people can see that. So go to this, visit yeah. books.ufomaee.org and she's ufomaee on social media. So go check her out. Thank you, ufomaee, for being here. We really appreciate you. My love to your baby boy and have a fantastic day. <laughs> love you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys. How did that go? How did that go? How did that go? Thank you. Thank you for keeping it uh, coming in the comment section. So Ufomai e took us through about 10 things that um, have to do with the art of storytelling, you know, talking about honesty, boldness, having imagination, you know, also connecting it to reality, um, having a little bit of controversy in there, do it, not being scared of being controversial, you know, having some conflict and resoluting, let, let there be a resolution of that conflict and then add some faith, hope, and love to your story to actually bring it home. I hope that that has been insightful for you guys. Thank you so much. Um, you say it was a lovely Aries. Uh, oh, Ore, she's gone, but I'll let her know. Ore says, I love your voice, Ufoma. Arize says, thank you, Ufoma. Arizia also says it was a lovely session. Thank you, thank you, guys. You guys are amazing. Now, moving on without much ado, I'm going to be calling on our next speaker. This one there, she's my soul sister. Like, <laughs> when you say soul sister, this is her, right? I love her so much, okay? I'm bringing on Azizat Shofunde, who is a broadcaster. 
a voiceover practitioner, a proofreader, a enthusiast. Oh, she gave me my first live uh, opportunity to host a live conference, right? In 20, I think that was 2017 or so, 20, or 2018, thereabouts. No, that can't be 2018, 2017, I think. <laughs> or 16, even. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so she's a craft enthusiast and a serial entrepreneur. She has a rich experience in creating, producing, and presenting on radio and television shows. Um, as a voiceover practitioner, she has a voice on audiobooks, on mixy fun books, and on radio, television, show, show imaging, TV series, hypes, jingles, and the many, many more. So with the uh, great excitement in the comment section please i want to see the emojis before i bring her up let me know that somebody is here and expecting our next speaker let me see the emojis in the session in the comment section come on guys don't keep me hanging i don't keep my guests waiting come on i want to bring azizat on please show some love in the comment section where are the emojis Yes, Arisa. In fact, I think you're going to win your gifts today because you're just on top of the game. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to bring um, Azazi up now. Hey, sister. <laughs> How are you, sis? Ah, great. Um, uh, I feel amazing. Um, good morning. Good day. How how is everyone doing? As I, I feel elated listening to Ufoma EE. That was quite insightful. I had my notes. I jotted some things down. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now is your turn to wow us. Please take it away, sis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for the introduction, um, EJ, energetic sister there. Um, before I go on, I, I want to seize this opportunity to uh, pay a few seconds tribute to a darling sister, Emilia Asim Ita, um, who departed the world to meet our creator. May her gentle soul rest in peace. Um, let me just do this. I will just make sure I do this well, um, just to uh, honor her. All right, so what are we talking about today? Discovering your vocal power. Hmm. Interesting, very broad, uh, but for this um, session, I'll be as um, concise as possible. First, a few things we will do today. We'll try to understand the human voice and um, types of voices, how we can differentiate them, understanding the attributes of the human voice. And of course, fly with our discoveries and get to know a few tips about improving the vocal strength, um, vocal skill techniques, and very importantly, uh, going by the theme of this um, summit, audiobook narration skills. So let's get into it. The human voice, it is, uh, it is very go, important. Sorry, mommy. Auntie, auntie. Yes. Excuse me, auntie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to use your, 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 your presentation or you just go by heart? Okay, so let, me just, let me just go this way. I, I, I have it here, though, okay, but okay. of course, if you want to bring no it on. If, yeah. I can, right? Okay, so people can just follow as well. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> See you soon. Okay, so uh, the human voice, uh, it is very important. A, a, a very first step of understanding the human voice entails on... um knowing, understanding what it is, how it functions and all of that. The human voice first, let us take it as unique as we have our human faces, as we have our fingerprints and all of that. So there isn't, as far as I'm concerned, there isn't a bad voice, there isn't a good voice. We just sound uniquely different and very uh, brilliant too. For us to understand human voice, first we must understand the vocal cords. Uh, the vocal cords, the primary sources and instrument of the sounds that the human produce as the voice. Now these dual, bound, uh, these dual bands actually are the smooth muscle 
that are, are found in the larynx. They protect the airway. Producing the sound, producing the human voice is one thing that is done with um, airflow from the vocal um, system in us and of course the external articulators that we have. Let me not go too much into that details, but understanding it, honestly, understanding it goes a long way to help with identifying, discovering your peculiarities when it comes to your own voice. Now, the sounds that we produce, the, the voice that we have that is peculiar to, to us, just like when you hear someone speak, when you hear a Jiro speak, you know that this is a Jiro. That peculiarity to our voice, similar to the face. When you see the face, you know this is a Jiro. When you see Aziza, you know this is Aziza. It's also contained in the peculiarity of the human voice. Now, the way we utilize our vocal cords is what determines how we sound. Utilizing the vocal cord consciously or unconsciously. Now, for those of us that are using the voice to pass messages, singing, speaking, we have to use it intentionally, which is why it is very important that we understand the human voice and of course how it's produced. In doing that, it helps us to utilize the vocal cords and some other um, articulators, the, the, the vocal organs, to articulate right. Moving on to voice types. Voice types, the, the characteristics of the human voice helps to differentiate the types of voices that we have. And in understanding the different types that of voices that we have, we have a better understanding of the human voice. And that definitely will lead us on to understanding our peculiar, our unique vocal power. And that is why we are here. That is why I'm, I'm also here to help us understand the process. It is a continuous process. Vocal power, there, 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 we, we have a lot of them. You, you can speak in different ways if you pay attention to how you use your vocal cords and all of the vocal elements. The core attributes that define the human voice. One is articulation, pronunciation, the way you pronounce, the way you articulate your words, your phrases definitely gives that tone or gives um, a feature to your voice. It makes you sound the way you sound. Fluency. You, when you listen to a, an educated person and an uneducated person, there will be a difference in how you speak or how your voice will sound. Or let us, let us even take it on to um, a, a, the languages the way you speak a particular language as a mother tongue, a mother tongue will be different if you are a learner. Inflection, these are the things that would color the human voice or your own voice. Where do you punch? Where do you place stress on your words? Where do you place, place, uh, place uh, stress on your sentences? If you pay attention to this, if you do um, um, a, a conscious exercise to, dis uh, to, to discover this or map this, you would identify those, um, that particular attribute in your own voice. Now, read them. Rhythm is, is, is very, very useful when we come to, uh, or is very, very clear when we come to spoken word, when we come to um, music, yeah, we, the, the, the flow of the words, it is an intentional act that brings this rhythm to the words or the voice that comes um, as sounds that we hear or listen to. Resonance, we have that as well, where you have either you speak through the nose or through your throat. That also defines the human voice type. The tempo, how fast do you speak? How slow do you speak? 
the texture is it breezy is it nice is it um is it osky it depends on how you pay attention to using your voice to also um speak or sing the tone this is a, a an attribute of, of the human voice that sets emotions. You might want to be polite and you might just want to be professional and you might want to be playful. This is one uh, attribute that is very, is much utilized by the comedians. Now, some of the pictures that I put in that slide, um, uh, one, one case study that will definitely uh, be relatable uh, to is um, Dr. Helen Paul. Yeah, uh, uh, she has definitely consciously explored a uh, uh, vocal strength, and I am very confident that she is still exploring much more. These attributes she has been able to pick in different variations, and she's able to achieve the um, uh, childlike human voice, and of course. The, the very serious professional ones. And of course, when you see her on, on, on stage as a comedian, you would also uh, be able to see that, yes, she's one person, but she's able to express a human voice in uh, taking on different attributes that the human voice can have. Now the pitch, the pitch is the high or the low. Um, in, in the human voice, be intentional, be natural, or being just dramatic about it. Vokra fry is one attribute that um, is also used intentionally when you speak without enough breath. And here um, it forms the kind of voice that sounds creaky, quirky, and um, with the words dragging, on and well, it, it is said that a lot of celebrities are using it now and a lot of people might just want to uh, adopt it. But understanding these core attributes will help in paying attention to your voice, listen to it, um, record it, play back. And in doing that, you'll be able to identify all of this, um, all of this um, attributes and see which one is your strength which one comes easily, seamlessly for you, which one you wouldn't have to force or damage your vocal cords doing. And identifying that will definitely help you to groom it, nurture it, fly with it. Yeah, one of the very key things um, about discovering your vocal power is just exercising it, just practicing, read out aloud, record it, playback, tell people to listen to you, hear the comments, um, uh, practice more, be disciplined, especially if you want to um, be intentional about speaking, if you want to be in intentional about acting, if you want to be intentional about singing, if you want to be intentional about narrating audiobooks, or you want to be intentional about just selling an idea, sending messages out there, this, are, um, this is one thing, practice that you must adopt, yeah? Record yourself, pay attention to the highlighted elements of the human voice, which comes to you so easily, which comes to you so um, effortlessly, which, which is it that you can actually do without um, stressing yourself, um, the one that you can actually hold on to for a long time without having to cough, without having to clear your throat, um, uh, without having to feel tired and all of that. Uh, and now when you pay attention to all of this, you will definitely um, um, identify what your unique vocal strength is and with this identification the realization it comes on with the cycle of practicing exercising um uh, recording yourself recording your voice play it back listen attentively be able to tick and mark where your strength lies and where your weaknesses uh, lie as well. And it is also very important that um, you set goals. Say for instance, I want to be an audiobook narrator. 
I will have to pay attention to certain skills that are actually also peculiar to being an audiobook narrator. So setting these goals, your styles of delivery, um, all this woven around your vocal power, your vocal range, and not trying to be or sound like someone else. Your voice is unique, your, your vocal strength is unique, and building on it will just make you stand out. Okay, uh, now uh, getting to practice, it's, it's important that um, you adopt certain vocal skills and techniques. Clarity of diction. What language is your choice? Learning that language also would color up your human voice, the sounds that you produce. Inflection, the accents. Now, English that we have adopted <laughs> uh, as our official language, do you want to stick to British accents or you want to stick to um, American accents? Yeah, it's up to you. You just have to be very conscious about all of those vocal skills and techniques, um, in, including um, alongside all the uh, ones mentioned, we also have pace. Yeah, how slow do you want to go? How fast do you want to go? And also considering the message you're sending and the audience that will be receiving this message. Projection, speaking out loud, that is very important for whoever wants to be on stage and will be addressing a very large audience. Intonation and phrasing, emotional range, and, and so on and so forth. Now, let's get to the ABCs of audiobook narration skills. Articulation is very important because now we are passing the message of the author. So articulating the words appropriately is very important. Pronouncing uh, words, getting the right tonation to avoid mouth noises is very important as well. Speaking and making sounds or recording and making sounds such as sibilant plosives are not attractive when it comes to recording audiobooks. Analysis. Now, as an audiobook narrator, if that is what your vocal strength is on and you want to develop it, analyzing to comprehend the author's message is very important. Hence, since you have been very intentional about in, um, digesting the message of the author, you are able to confidently and intentionally pass the message through the tone of your voice as you read. Breathing is also very important when you're recording for an audio, recording an audio book. You have to have a good breath control. All of these are quite practical. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just that we have limited time this, um, this, uh, for this summit to address all of this. But I'm making this point so that in your own quiet time, you can actually do it or probably even enroll to get um, a voice coach that will help you through the journey of discovering and, of course, developing your vocal power. Now, there is this um, skill that I call the BEM control, the brain, the eye, the mouth. Now, it is a whole lot of um, um, intentional acts to ensure that you have your mind present, you have your eye calculating, and you have your mouth in rhythm with all of this um, other organs so that you're focused and you easily will be able to lift the uh, words of the pages Azure, or of the screen, whatever platform you're using to read or to record. It's, it helps to make good delivery um, when you're reading um, or recording audiobook. Consistency. Now, energy level has to be consistent when um, audiobook is being recorded or you're reading an audiobook. Um, the consistency must be there. Uh, characterization is another one where you have, uh, you, you bring the voice. Now, this is where the voice coloration comes in. And of course, your vocal power, your vocal strength also comes in to characterization. If there are different POVs in the book, if there are different characters in the book, 
you use your skill of characterization, vocal <laughs> characterization to bring them to life. Um, the next one is delivering. Delivering, once you have a good analysis of the audiobook, you're able to deliver just in the spirit of the author's message because you're already in it and you've been able to carry your vocal um, organs along with it. So delivering will be very seamless. Investment, yes, investment, it, it entails um, investing in yourself, getting the training, um, investing time, um, intentional exercise, practice, uh, and of course, as much as possible, uh, pass on the interest. When you have all of this, you pass on the interest when you are delivering or a message to an audience, be it via singing or reading or speaking. Now, um, stamina is another thing that is very, very important, um, which is one of the, one, or one skill that resonates the importance of exercise. Exercise and staying hydrated Staying hydrated also helps with us, um, ensuring your stamina as you read, as you uh, pass the message, be it um, half hand or be it you reading it or, or be it just as spontaneous as it might be when you are um, using your human voice. So to ensure that you have a sustainable stamina while using your, the human voice, while using your voice, good exercise. There are several types of exercises. Yeah, there is one that I can quickly share now. It's um, you just trying to pronounce the word, no, trying to phonate the sounds. You just, you, you just keep saying it is one exercise that is very good um, that could help through um, a sustain your um, breath, breath control uh, for you. Um, another form of exercise is just um, you um, working with your um, external um, vocal organ, which is the, one of any of the articulators, um, make different sound, or roll your tongue, or do the principle of turning your um, uh, lips around uh, to ensure that um, they are well they are well lubricated, yeah. They are they are well um, familiar with uh, you using um, your vocal um, your vocal organs to easily be able to get the words out smoothly and, of course, uh, professionally. Uh, so that's that's the most I can quickly <laughs> I, I can quickly uh, squeeze in but we can never overemphasize the power of exercising we can never over emphasize the power of um, staying hydrated and um, of course and um, practice so those three things um, are, are some of the things we can adopt to ensure that we discover our vocal strength discovering um, um, what what works best, of course, weaving it with our passion. For instance, if comedy is is your own is your own passion, to, a medium to pass your message to the audience, then you are definitely going to be looking at some attributes of the human voice that has to do with um, the rhythm, where you can actually flow and carry the audience along or you want to look at the, um, the attribute of the human voice that has to do with inflection where you can bring the, the way you would say certain words and phrases that will just get the audience alive and of course in the spirit of getting along with you. Fantastic. Woo! Was that insightful or what? Guys, let me see in the comment section. <laughs> Thank you so much, sis. Do we have the pleasure of having this your presentation so that people can just go again and again? Is that possible? Yes, it's very possible. Oh, but like I mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, this 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 particular topic is more about practice. It's not just about talking okay. about it. 
Yeah, if you notice, I, I was just trying to glide through all the pointers and all, all, all of that. But it is it is very important. What what I would just advise, even if um you you get hold of the of the slides, it is very important that you practice it. You 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 get it into action. That is when you understand it. For instance, me talking about the attributes of voices, if you cannot try to practice it, do the reality, you will not understand it. Yeah, <laughs> taking water, <laughs> very important. So it is just about, it's more about practice. It's more about practice. the action. It's not just about no the theory. Okay. No problem at all. I know what I would do. I would not share. So what we would do is we would use that um, 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 uh, presentation as one of our guides as being a part of the NOP community. So if you join the group, We'll have a time set aside for us to practice those things on the group, right? Oh, so you want to be a member of the group, and then we're going to be taking it one after the other, and maybe give ourselves some challenges so that people, all of you, can actually practice and share on the group, and then get real time feedback. So do that if you're yet to join the NOP group on Facebook. Then don't be darling because these are some of the things that you stand to enjoy as being a member of that community. Thank you so much, um, Zazi. Zazi is still going to be here with us. So guys, if you have any question, please just note it down because we're going to have a panel session afterwards so that all of us can ask the question um, to, the, to, to the speaker. So just drop the, um, drop, note your question. At the end of all the speakers, we're going to bring all of them together and then you can ask your question so that we don't um, take too much time. Not without further ado, thank you so much, Zazi. God bless you. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah. So um, you're going to be backstage now. Thank you. So I'm going to be called um, bringing up uh, my dear sister. Like I, I have energy. It's like she has energy too. So it's like energy calling onto energy. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, this is she's my sister's sister saying all of us now. You know, area, area people, I'm saying. <laughs> so she's going to be bringing her energy up here and um, she's going to be taking us through vocal care, just like segueing from what Zazie has started and she's going to be taking it deeper. So she's the coach in the, in the house. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so just hold on to your questions. Please note your questions. We're going to take them afterwards. Our speakers will be here afterwards to just go through the questions. Now I'm bringing up KP's voice. Her real name is Apogo Edoho, and she is a professional voiceover artist with work spanning from 2006 till date. No be beans, guys. This woman has been doing this for a very long time, okay? She voices in English, Pidgin, and in her native language is so cool. Hey, Digo, sister. <laughs> Some of our words include some of our works include voiceovers for Zenith Bank, First Bank, Jettle Soap and Disinfectant, Glow, Eltel, Pilkmik, All These Baby Diaper, uh, Alpen Alpenime Sweets, Daro Milk, DSTV, Go TV, Dusumam, eh, she's on fire, KFC Spa, The Slim Body Lotion, Aerial Detergent, just to mention a few. I mean, if you've been on the, in this game for over 14 years or 15 years, like it's it's okay now. Nah. It's enough, right? And and of course, not forgetting audiobooks as well. Um, what is fascinating about Scape is, is a fluid ability to navigate the most challenging script and still deliver in a tone that will leave you enchanted. <laughs> I'm not as good as she is, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, without further ado, I'm going to bring on stage my sister KP boys. Put it together, put it together. <laughs> around, around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what an intro! All for moi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my, I'm, I'm I'm so honored to be here. I'm I'm so Thank glad you. that. You 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 saw me worthy enough to be on your platform, you know, and um, you. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm humbled. Um, hi guys. Hi everyone. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever uh, you're watching from. So I'm just gonna disappear uh, so you take the stage. Bye. <laughs> 
All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is you're watching from. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Katie Boyce, and I'm so glad to be sharing my experience with you uh, on um, vocal care. Yes, I'll be talking about vocal care today. And um, there are quite a number of things to what vocal care is all about. But let's start from what vocal care simply means, okay? You may want to ask, what is vocal care? Vocal care is simply taking proper care of the voice. Simply taking proper care of the voice. In another way, you can say vocal care is, there are, there are the things that we do, there are things that we do to the voice to keep the voice healthy, to keep the voice strong as um, a, vo a voiceover artist, a storyteller, or a musician, as it were. Okay, so um, you know that as uh, professionals or um, um, a desiring voice of an artist that, that um, you, you, you may be, there are different things that we are required to do to keep our voices healthy, to keep our voices strong in the journey of storytelling, you know, because the truth is that if we are looking at, you know, doing this as a um, career longevity, doing it for as long as, you know, say, you want to start at, at uh, 20 years old, and you want to do this to, to you know, when you're 30, you're 40, you're 50, you're 60. The truth is that you, there are, there are certain things that are required of you to do, okay, to keep your voice strong. And then not only that, um, being that our voice is our greatest tool, we cannot overemphasize the fact that we need to take care of our voices, okay? So I'm just going to um, share with us um, a, a few vocal tips on how to take care of our voices. Um, I'm also going to share with us on how to make our voices uh, sound better and how, you know, we can tell uh, better stories as narrators or, you know, have, or how you can have a better storytelling voice, as it were. Okay, so let's get right into it. I hope you have your writing materials together. Okay, let's go. Uh, for um, one of the first things I like to do when it comes to vocal care is keeping hydrated at all times. You say, leave by example, so I got my brother right here. <laughs> so I have been, you know, taking um, good warm water every time. You have to keep hydrated to help your vocal cords, okay? You have to keep hydrated at all times, not just keeping hydrated by drinking just any kind of water, good warm water. All right, you have to take good warm water, not cold water, because guess what? Cold water tends to freeze the vocal cords, believe it or not. Cold water tends to freeze up the vocal cords, okay? So it's more advisable that you take less of cold water and take more of warm water to keep your voice healthy, okay? To keep your vocal cords healthy. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about is... Um, I know that sometimes we as parents, it's quite difficult to have, to not yell. You have, you know, your, your child maybe is doing something wrong, you try to correct and you find yourself yelling. Forgetting that you have work to do. So what I would advise is try as much as possible, try as much as possible rather, not to yell as much. If you can avoid it, avoid it. I know it's hard, yeah, I know. But you have to try as much as possible to stop yelling stop screaming guess what when you yell when you scream it tends to imitate your voice yes it puts stress on the voice so less of yelling and more of staying quiet <laughs> if it's possible okay uh the third um tip i'll give you on on vocal care is this now when i know it's inevitable sometimes we tend to you know go under the weather we catch a cold, we, you know, um, you have a sore throat, you have a cough, you have catar. Now, the second things that you can do to stay healthy, okay, as a vocal, um, as a voice of an artist or as a singer, because the truth is that you want to do these jobs when they come in. There's no excuse of, I'm not feeling fine because the money is good, isn't it? <laughs> so, I mean, um, you, when you, when you find yourself catching a cold, right? All you have to do is make sure that you take proper medication, 
okay? It, uh, it could be a cough medicine, uh, it could be um, something for the sort of lozenges or something, or you take um, you take um, warm tea with ginger, yeah? Warm tea with ginger, honey, and lemon, okay? Take a lot of honey. Do you actually know that honey is high in nutrition? I tell you, honey is fantastic. Instead of even, you know, putting sugar in your tea, for instance, when you want to have breakfast or dinner or something, try honey. You'll be amazed at the difference it will, it will, it will give to you. So honey is high in nutrients, okay? Uh, ginger, you know, it's hot. Some people actually take ginger raw. They chew on it, you know, chew on it, and then uh, some can't stand the heat as much. So you have ginger in the, uh, in the powder form. You can even grate it and all of that, um, and boil it up. So ginger is fantastic and it's really, really good as it warms you up right from the inside, okay? Um, another thing, another thing that's quite important I'll have to share right now is this. Avoid, if you can, avoid staying in an cold or in a cold um in a very cold room as it were avoid excessive air conditioning i know that for instance lagos is a very hot place but you know you have to find a balance you have to be able to find a way to um not um stay too much in an air conditioned room why it affects the larynx that's one and then you end up having a cold or sore throat, which you're trying so much to run away from as a voiceover artist, as a storyteller, as a musician, okay? So avoid excessive air conditioning. Also, avoid alcoholic drinks. Shock you, Abby. <laughs> alcoholic drinks have a way of affecting the voice, especially when you want to work, honestly. Alcoholic drinks does affect the voice. So stay away from that, especially when you want to work, when duty calls, okay? Also, avoid spicy foods. Mm -hmm. Spicy foods, of course, you know, when you take something spicy, you tend to cough. And of course, it goes on and on and on. So avoid spicy foods. Um, avoid milk. Yes. Yes, milk. When you have to work. I'm not saying you should not drink milk at all, but I'm just saying when you have to work, you know, you have to avoid um, spicy foods and avoid milk. And um, I'm going to burst some bubbles right now. For some of you who like to smoke, mm -mm, smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke. It affects your voice over time. Yep, it affects your voice over time. Okay, so I can't really stress on that, you know, but I guess it's, it's quite understandable as it is. Don't smoke, okay? Then, when you are in the middle of a session or when you are getting ready to getting down to working, take vocal breaks. Take vocal, vocal breaks when you're preparing for a recording session. All right. Um, you could have, um, you know, we have um, narrations, we have audio books, we have um, 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 bios, 60 second jobs, you have the, the, the hours, you have, you know, so you should be able to. When you're rehearsing your script, whether it's a 60-second script, whether it's um, um, whether it's um, a, a one-hour you know script, whether however long it is, you must you must as you go on rehearsing take vocal breaks, give your voice a rest because really at the end of the day you want to sound very good during your recording session. Yeah. All right then. And then on finally on vocal tips, um, when in a recording session. Try as much as possible not to clear your throat. <coughs> mm -mm. It affects your vocal cords. Yep, it affects your vocal cords. Okay, so if you really need to clear your throat, try clearing gently, like, <coughs> you know, if you could avoid clearing your throat really hard, try, try gently, or perhaps just get a sip of water. That does the trick. <laughs> All right, so um, let's go down to how to make your voice sound better. I'll try to really be fast about that. I know that my time is limited. Uh, so um, let's talk about how to make our voices sound better. Okay, first of all, relax. Relax, okay? Relax your muscles before the session. 
practice breathing, you know, um, my, 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 my dear sister that I spoke right before I did, um, as the, uh, she, said, she said, you know, you have to practice breathing and that's the ultimate truth. Practice breathing, breathe. Breathe to clear your lungs, breathe to clear your airways, <clears throat> excuse me, breathe to clear your lungs, breathe to clear your airways, just to keep calm, really. You know, because you are trying to uh, get into a character. You're trying to play, you know, what you're probably not on a normal day. So you need to relax and be yourself. Then again, when you're talking about relaxing, yawn, yawn, it helps. <sighs> It helps you relax. It helps you relax, I tell you. Then again, practice, practice, practice. Oh my God, play with your voice. You have no idea what you have hidden in there. I remember when I started um, um, about 14 years plus ago now, and uh, I, I remember when I was working, I was working with an independent production house at the time. And, um, um, and so I was, while producing programs for, for TV and radio, and then again, my boss now said one day, okay, I'll keep it. Let's, let's get down to voicing the job. I'm like, okay, that was new to me. But I, I never really knew what voicing was all about because I had never practiced it, you know. But then again, she now said, okay, let's get this done. And then I got into the studio. I just, I mean, I, I, I rehearsed my scripts and I went in. I remember the engineer was like, oh my God, you are good. I'm like, okay. I just did it because it's natural. Like, you know, but that now taught me that look, if I'm if I if I'm good and this is my first time, oh I, I think I have potential here. So I, I, I started practicing, I practiced more, I listened a lot to commercials. I still do. I do a lot of reading. I practice and practice and practice because the truth is that you can never know how much you can do. Play with your voice. You can sometimes sound like an old woman, you can sound like a young girl, you can sound, you know, local, whether in your your, your, your native language, whether in teaching, you know, whether in, and they tell you if you see the kind jobs with the forget it, your voice can do it. Don't 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 distrust yourself. You can do it. All right. Read out loud to your hearing. Read out loud to your hearing when you're practicing. Get a storybook, read out loud to your hearing. Read, 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 it is fantastic. Use the appropriate tone of your voice for the specific job that is required for you to do. Absolutely true. Try not to sound like anyone else because the truth is that you are unique as your voice is. God made us uniquely different the way we are. We cannot, we shouldn't, we shouldn't try to sound like somebody else because the truth is that someone else is there admiring your kind of voice. That's the honest truth. So use your God-given talent, um, um, work on, on yourself, you know, and the sky is just the starting point for you. Absolutely. Now, quickly, let me just get to the tips on how to be a good narrator, okay, or how to improve your storytelling voice, as it were. Be yourself. Be natural. Your voice is unique to you. Your voice is unique to you. I tell you the truth. I'll just put it the way it is. Your voice is unique to you. You are different. You are special. And so if you can find that hidden thing in your voice, I tell you, you do amazing things in the voice of our industry. Know the story well. When you're given a story to read, when you're given an audio book, for instance, that you have to do, you have to work on, know the story well. And the only way that you can actually know the story well is by you familiarizing yourself with the story. Get the book, read it back to back before your recording session because you have to be comfortable enough to tell the story to others. We have to be able to feel your passion, your energy, your heart, your heart. Imagine that you, I mean, there are places where you have to smile. We have to feel your smile. We have to, we have to feel your laughter. We have to feel your sadness as in your son, like, I can't take it anymore. You don't know? I can't take it anymore, no? I can't take it anymore. Like, I'm done. Like, I can't. You know, we have to feel that emotion coming through. You have to be, it's passionate for me because this is my life. I mean, voice, voicing is my life. So, I'm passionate about this, about this, really. You have to familiarize yourself with the, with, with the story. Internalize it. Internalize it as much as you can, okay, before you do a proper recording, all right? Um, because the truth is that when you have a listener or someone hearing your voice or maybe you did an audiobook and you're listening or you did a radio or TV ad and they're watching or listening, the truth is that you will be remembered for the passion that you put into what did I tr trust me? You will be remembered for the passion. I can't say that anymore. I, I, I can't. I can't reiterate that any further. 
you get what I mean? So please get down to that and you'll be amazed at what you can achieve. Also, practice mouth muscle workouts. Oh my God. Just the way you go to the gym to, you know, keep in shape and keep, um, keep alive, keep healthy. Practice mouth muscle workouts. There are quite a number of them out there, but there's this one I like to do. Q-E-Q-R. 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 You actually need this to get your diction right. It opens up the mouth muscles. Q-E-Q-R. 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 Sometimes you want to say, like, want to say, oh, clear pronunciation is key. You know, wanna, no, you have to be, clear, clear pronunciation is key. Clear pronunciation is key. I, I'm sure you heard what I said very well. Okay? Um, so, practice mouth, you know, muscle workout. It helps. Absolutely. It helps. Okay? Clear pronunciation is actually key. Clear pronunciation is key. We want to be able to hear what you're saying when you're reading a script, when you're singing, when you're, you know, you're talking, um, whether, you know, you're a public speaker, however it is, you need to be clear. And it's always best to tell a story with the right annotations, the clear annotations, things like, okay, I mean, while, while, while you're, you're, you're reading, like, okay, and so I went there the other day. I, I was going to tell you something, but I was like, you know what? Let's wait a bit. Clear. Be clear. Okay. Um, you need to be clear in, in talking. You need to be loud enough as well for everyone to understand what it is that you are saying, what it is that you're passing, the message, it is that, the message that you're passing across. We need to be able to hear you clearly so that we can understand and also, you know, enjoy the story along with you. Okay. And above all, learn to rest out your voice after hours of reading. Learn to rest out your voice after hours of reading. The truth is that you need to be fine. You need to always stay in tip top shape. So when you, um, when you are done with your reading session, take out time to rest. Everything really is just about you know, money, 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 money. Oh, you're chasing, you want to, you want to, um, well, I, I'm really, I mean, I have bills to pay, I have this and that, and then you're not feeling too well, and then you are, you are, um, you just want to get, get into getting the job down, done, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. You need to be in, the, in tip top shape for the, to, the, to deliver best at all times. So when you know that you're not, if you know you're not feeling fine, take out time to rest, take a lot of water, take ginger and honey. If you could take ginger every day, as in, fantastic, great stuff, all right? Great, great stuff. And while you're still learning how to, um, how to be um, a, a good voice um, over artist, a good storyteller, a narrator, a, a musician, you know, you could maybe at home, if you have a, a home studio, and even, with, even with your phone, you don't even need, need so much. Even with just your phone, I mean, I'm sure we all have um, recording, uh, we, we can all record with our phones. So when you get down to practicing, you can jot down, you know, it's called a rubric of practice session. They call it rubric of practice session. So when when you can you can you can rate yourself, you know, very poor, poor, average, good, very good, excellent, you know, based on the use of relevant words, your drama, you know, the kind of roles that you're playing. Um, I mean, depending on the point of view, you know, of the of the character. Um, your, 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 your gestures, you know, are you doing the right, are you, you know, are you gesticulating well enough? Are you, I mean, your, your, your expression, uh, when you're happy, can we feel it? When you're sad, can we feel it? When, when you, um, when you um, pronounce your words quite clearly, can we hear you clearly? You know, are you clear enough? Are you clear enough? There are different accents. So you don't have to try to sound, you know, American because uh, I have to speak much. I don't sound American. Uh, I will not, you know, they will take me for this audition. As this audition, I won't pass. Mm -mm, trust me. There are every jobs that you, that um, there, there are jobs that come that are not for you. Just that it's not every job that you will do because there are jobs that your voice can take. But it's not every job. It's not every job that you will do, okay? So when you are asked to send in your voice sample for an audition and you don't get called back or they, or they send you a mail or a message and say, oh, I'm sorry, you, you didn't qualify, don't feel bad. It doesn't make you, uh, it doesn't make you any less um, a good um, voice actor. It only means that, look, that wasn't my job or that wasn't the voice texture they were looking for for that particular job, okay, for that particular role. So your voice is unique, remember? 
Your voice is different. Your voice is beautiful. Only if you can keep practicing, don't give up on yourself. Remember that you can do all things. You can, you can if you choose to, you can if you want to, okay? But if you are desiring to be a voiceover artist, if you want to be a professional, not just talk, you know, all of us can talk, and you can talk ahead. But you talk and you sell, you sell your voice. Hi, can I can I actually sell? Can I can I just I mean am I allowed to promote a brand right now? Yes, please go on. I can I, ah hey you don't hear that thing. I say go TV, go TV, live it, love it. And so we do every time you know I mean let me know. <laughs> but that's that's pigeon, okay? And then I want to sound, you know, I'm, I'm sounding local now. And then I want to sound them um, like, you know, uh, like a mother. And then I go something like, oh, um, um, my son, my son is a star in the making, always ready to get set, juggle. He always plays in the river. He always plays in the living room like a pro, juggling his shoes around and having, you know, um, spoons and, and forks around playing on, on pots and, and plates, just trying to make sounds and just wanting to be himself. I just love my son. Don't you just want to have a son like mine? <laughs> and then I want to sound like <clears throat> a tatafo, a tatafo person now. Hey, my sister, have you heard what I heard? As he did. You don't understand. Hey, have you heard what I heard? You know that guy now? Ah, uh, forget. I am entry. That's in. This one, it is violent. Take it by force. So I am going ahead to shoot my shots. Ah, that is a tatafo person. And then, and then you want to sound. <laughs> oh my God. I wish I had so much time. And then, and then you want to sound like, you know, uh, um, um, like you're troubled and then your son. My credit just finished and I, I, I'm stranded somewhere. I need to get, I need to get at him, but I can't. I mean, I did this job. I did this job for Glow um, um, about two, three years ago now. And then, and then the announcer comes in and like, I'm like, oh, um, you, you want this? Yeah, you can just, you know, borrow at time from this and another. And then I don't go, aha, as I was saying, it, hey, if you see that dress <laughs> I was talking about, oh boy. Please, please. <laughs> Guys, you're here. How many years do you have? Oh, yes. How many years do you have? Better join this is This is the thing that you will be enjoying if you become a, 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 a member of that group because we're going to be bringing on our speakers here for specific classes. Uh -huh. They have courses already that they are going to be offering us. And see, we are getting it at a very, very ridiculously discounted <laughs> amount. So, guys, don't dull. If you like dull, that's how you just see that somebody now that be doing, you be doing what you are doing. You don't be making money, making money. You be like, ah, what is it happening? What is happening? You have here now, uh, join, join the, the bus now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jira, I didn't know you were this funny. Oh my God. You see, we plenty of. We, we plenty. plenty. <laughs> body. Body. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This has been very insightful. Oh, no. Like I was so, so much. like, oh, God, we need to just yeah. dedicate the whole session to you. Don't worry. And that's gonna happen. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Know that you have to be a member of the NOP. It is called mm -hmm. Narrators on Purpose. Narrators, mm -hmm. check for Narrators on Purpose on Facebook and click to join. We'll ask a, a, a couple of questions. Answer those questions and you are going to be allowed into the booth. Thank you so much, KPs. I really Thank enjoyed you too. Thank you too. I look Thank you everyone. to the classes that we're going to be having together. God bless Looking you. Looking forward to that too. Thank you. Bless you too. All right. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Okay, guys. Wow. How was that session? Hey, this is sweet. Oh, it sweets me. It sweets me. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's go on quick. Now I want to invite. Hey, this one, eh? Anytime I call Max's name, I just remember Optimus Prime. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but now I'm going to be bringing on Max, okay? With well over 2,000 voiceover jobs. Did, 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 did you hear that? Did you hear that? Over 2,000 voiceover jobs under his belt. In under him, Miller. Under his belt. Sorry. Under his belt, 15-year career 
um, Eric Maximus Equipment is an excellent choice when you need a fresh, versatile, and naturally charismatic guy next door. Yet, corporately professional, corporate professional voice for your commercials, narrations, promos, e-learning modules, trailers, documentaries, events, and corporate presentation. Maximus speaks in various major authentic African accents spanning the continent. A proud African from Nigeria, Maximus loves storytelling and possesses a global sound, a warm, smooth, persuasive tenor baritone voice, which captures the heart of every listener, leaving them yearning for what he sells and the stories he tells. However, customers, client satisfaction is his number one priority. Eric is a go-to voice and a major market A-list voice over talent in Africa and has voiced for over 17% of Africa's top brands you know and love. So whether it's a neutral international sound you want or something more from the motherland, you are guaranteed a breath of life to your work and the captivation of your audience. Ah, ah, see profile now. You go fear. You go was your chest not beating g -g -g when you were listening to that profile? Oh my God, please. Without further ado, with Jesus joy, with plenty, plenty, plenty energy in the comment section, let us welcome Maximus Prime. <laughs> Why are you looking for my trouble, eh? Jiro? Why are you looking for my trouble? Why? I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> well, I can't shout. <laughs> Oh if I had known that you were going to do this, I probably wouldn't have sent the profile I sent to you. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to send the market now. If you don't sell that kind of uh, See, profile. Because it is very important that we sell this market the way we sell it. Though. I'm telling you, my brother. I'm telling you. It's very important. Because you never know who might be watching you, you know. They want to oh. now make you, you know, want them um, uh, sign you for one brand like that. You, you understand. You, like, you know, 50 million, 100 million a year. You get it. You get the ma you get the magic. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna leave you in the hands of Max. Take it away, bro. <laughs> yeah, leave it. Yeah, people are leaving me. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Eric Ekwame, but um, most people have known me for the last couple of years as Maximus. Um, I don't. I don't want to talk too much. Don't mind my um, video quality. I'm not used to using my laptop's uh, camera. I'm used to using that of my phone. But unfortunately, I've been thrown into the show this way. Um, I want to first of all contradict some of the things my fellow facilitators have said. Um, yes, it is important to exercise. It is important to avoid certain things for vocal care. But... As we've just discovered in Nigeria very recently, a lot of us have started doing other genres of work that previously we were not doing before. And as a result of that, even those things could be redundant. And let me give you an example. If you're doing video games, if you're doing animation in Nigeria, your vocal dexterity is required to be more than usual. So, shouting and screaming comes with a job because you don't know what you're going to be doing in your script. You don't know whether you're going to be shouting, man down, man down, go, 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 go. You don't know. You don't know whether you're going to be doing, please, I'm afraid there's someone here. I, I might die. <laughs> Send help. Please, no, no, no. You don't know. And those things come with the job. I started, delve, I, I started delving into animations and games very recently. So I know what it takes. I just joined the crew of Area. And the director there for Area, uh, the, I'm sure you guys know the animation Area. Area! The director there, Remy, doesn't care if you've had breakfast, whether you've had lunch, whether you've had dinner, whether you're, you're, you've exercised, whether you're... As far as he's concerned, he's going to get that energy out of you without caring. So it's expected that you do some things to your voice. Yes, you might lose your voice in the beginning. Let me give an example. So one of the characters I'm playing in the new series that Area is developing um, is an 
emperor from outer space and he has more like a villainous kind of voice so naturally i wouldn't be doing this if i was a regular radio tv advert documentary kind of voice of artist but because i've been i've delved into animation a bit um I, and i had to study understudy some of the previous works from artists outside nigeria i had to learn um changing my voice so for a very long time i i tried nat king cole um and um louis armstrong so the, all those i see trees of green red roses too i lost my voice for weeks but as i did it more and more i got used to doing it normally so for the show the area i'm great bandarians naturally that would tear my voice my vocal cords but because i've done it long enough i was able to do a three-hour session without changing my format so you need to learn to do that so while i un understand vocal care please bear in mind if you're going to enter animation you're going to enter games you will not have such you know opportunities anyway let me just um leave that for now when we have the full class we can discuss this so i'm going to be talking more about monetizing your voice when we started in this business or when i joined in the business a couple of years ago the interpretation is um or the interpretation we met was that you go to an advertising agency you tell them you have a good voice they give you a script tell you to mention your name you go in with the script you record you put your phone number down and you leave if they like you they give you work if they don't like you they don't give you work to a certain extent that um practice is still on today if you're working for any advertising agency in Nigeria, there's a certain tendency that you will have to go in and drop your voice for an, an, an audition so that they get to have your contact details and know how to reach you. Because back in the day, what used to happen was a, uh, a producer from one advertising agency will call the pro a, a fellow producer and another advertising agency and say, yo, 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 um, yeah, you just did the advert for um, Milo right now, yeah? That voice, the, the guy you used, um, do you have his contact? You know, that used to be the case back then. Well, it's still the case up till now anyways, but things have changed a lot more. Um, over the dawning of the 21st century, people have started to improve on their communication skills. So things we used to do back in the day are now a little obsolete now because advertising agencies are no longer the only ones in the business. You have radio and tv stations you have production houses you have uh, clients who want to do direct you can do direct marketing too so my um what i'm going to talk about about uh, you know monetizing your voice should focus on what steps you take to move from point a to point b okay yeah um sorry um i know they said warm water this is cold because um i'm required because of my 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 tone i'm a tenor baritone so i'm required to you know drink cold water if i want to maintain a certain tone now um when you now with we we bless god for the fact that this is nop and you know you guys are going to see firsthand some of the things that we we offer in terms of classes um I, however, always advise that you have one-on-one -on -one sessions with a coach or a mentor. Now, what the difference between the two of them is that one is a coach, um, somebody you pay for his time and services, and he trains you in all aspects of the market and the business itself. The mentor is more like somebody you latch on to somebody you tag along with who can show you the ropes without necessarily being your coach 
So you, you can reach out to him like, hey, uh, Mr. Something Something or Mrs. Something Something. Um, I did this job. I don't know. Do you think I'd, I'd like you to hear it and tell me what you think about it? Now, that person, not necessarily your coach, but the, can give you a little of insights and also introduce you to some people who will help you along the way in your voiceover journey. When we started um, doing voiceovers, it was just mm, you're a voiceover artist. Now it's a voiceover business. So your voice is only 5%. 5% of the overall work. To monetize your voice, first and foremost, you require training. First and foremost, you require training. And I'm talking about one-to-one -one or even if it's, you need, you need a coach to look at you and evaluate your abilities because when they can evaluate your abilities, that will lead to knowing your niche. And when you know your niche, you can start to market yourself based on those abilities. For instance, not every voiceover artist will be able to do radio T, um, or, or TV commercials. Not everyone. Not everyone can do documentaries. Not everyone can do Voice of God. For those of you who don't know what Voice of God is, that's the voice at the background in events that always announce maybe nominees or after the break, we're going to be going to, uh, or this person is going to be performing live. Stay tuned. You know, that's the voice in the background. That's the, what we call the Voice of God. Not everyone can do long... In fact, I can tell you for a fact, me and Ejiro have quarreled because she wanted me to do an audiobook. I don't get the energy for audiobook. I don't have the talent for audiobook. I don't have the longevity for audiobook. I don't have the patience for audiobook. So not everyone can do that. Oh, yeah, I forgot. As he said, uh, there's a particular skill that was missing for audiobooks. I, I should have mentioned that to you privately. Um, that's a sight reading. The ability to read a book or read between and uh, read into lines without making mistakes. Sight reading. I do not sight read. That's one of the reasons why I avoid long form narration. So, based on things I've mentioned, not everyone can do that. And when you do your training, your coach can tell you what your voice fits into. Understand that when you do your training, your coach tells you or shows you what you can fit into. After a couple of years and with a lot of experience, you might develop other skills that will help you grow. But at the beginning, you cannot do all of them. You cannot Listen to me, you cannot do all of them. If your plan is to do all of them, I think you should just use, there's a button somewhere around there that says, you know, leave. I don't know where it is. Just press the button now and leave. Because I'm telling you the truth, you cannot. I started with commercials. I did a couple of documentaries, but now I've done just about almost every genre of work over the last couple of years, but it did not come easy. When I did animation, I thought Remy was my enemy because what he made me do with my voice, I almost took a bottle and smashed it on his head. I was like, eh -eh, I have to be doing radio, I've been doing TV. Nobody's giving me this kind of stress. But that's the truth. If you're not prepared for it, you cannot do everything. You can try, but you will fail in some regard, or if not most of the regard. So, first things first, let's look at the Nigerian voiceover industry as it is today. After your training, and that's why it's important to have this training. If you go to an, an, um, an advertising agency or a radio station or a production house without proper training and you drop your voice, I can guarantee you one thing. They will forget you faster than the flash can run across your street. They will forget you that quickly. I've had experiences where even 
if the producer is in, in a bad mood, it is better you show up for an audition and he's in a bad mood, you leave and come back and record some other day than you record when he's in a bad mood. Because if you're not careful, he didn't save your name. He didn't save your file. He didn't record you. You just entered the drop to voice. So it is important that you also understand the industry you're going into. You might not get that information all in your training, but it's also important you do background work and find out what is obtainable in the industry you are entering. It's like trying to get a job in a company. You need to study or find out a couple of things about the company if you're going for the interview. Because if you don't, and they ask you some things, one of them will just be like, this person is not serious. He'll be like, no, I want this job. He doesn't even know anything about this company. Mm. Yeah, forget the person. So it's very important that you study the industry. Now, the reason why I said that is because the trend has changed from just going to advertising agencies to now having what we call a demo, a properly produced demo. If you are a voiceover artist anywhere in the world and you do not have a demo, you do not have any reason whatsoever to practice the job. Yes, you can get away with it. Um, a lot of us in this industry didn't have demos until very recently. And that's because some of us were exposed to working outside of Nigeria. Um, I didn't have a demo until I had a... I think it was my first job outside Nigeria. It was either to Ghana or so. And then someone says, okay, so do you have a voice sample? I'm like, huh? Well, I can get you some of my old jobs. And he was like, no, no, no. I want a demo that showcases your ability. That is what you get from training. Your coach will exploit your abilities to the point where you can take out a demo and say, these are the things I'm capable of doing. That is your calling card. That is your foot through the door, your demo. So you can have that in hand so that whenever it is, sorry, excuse me. Whenever it is you're required to do um, or to, to um, audition or quote for a job, they're not sending the wrong person the script the essence of auditioning in the business is finding out who best fits what role so monetizing your voice still boils down to the fact that you have to do training you have to understand the industry you have to have a demo when you have a demo then you have taken the major step in the business you have that demo for various reasons you can decide to market yourself directly to clients i'm not going to give you the secrets about that you have to contact me privately you know so i can tell you and it will cost you money but you can do direct marketing to clients you can do social media marketing a lot of people do it today you post a job um stuff you've done you know and but you need to take permission to take permission from your client to so don't just go and post the work without telling them please do i'd like the rights to be able to post this online because if not and you become a star of the job that you posted which belongs to them technically they can come after you and all that money that you made is gone so you can do social media marketing you can do direct marketing you can you could do direct marketing to clients and do direct marketing to the service providers as the advertising agencies, radio and TV stations, and um, production houses. Then if you grow to a certain extent in the business where some of your clients are no longer coming from just Nigeria, then you can also start doing email marketing to clients outside of Nigeria. There are ways of doing these things. You um, you need to get certain contacts. You need to have your demo or a website. Now, we can put that aside for now. 
another important thing you need to do in this business right now, unlike we did back in the day, you need to have a registered business name. You need to have a registered business name, be it your vo your name, maybe you're using like my name, Eric Ekweme, or your you have a, a platform or a nickname like KP does. KP's name is Akboho, but every for as long as I've known KP, so maybe if only when we're, we're looking for trouble, each other's trouble, that I'll call her Akboho. I've never called her that. It's KP. And everybody in the business knows her as KP. So you need to have a registered business name, whether it is your name or whether it is your nickname. Well, I, I don't know. It depends on you and, you know, whatever. Because the reason for the business name is that you must, all, you must also have a registered tax ID. Because it's, it's already getting to that time in, in Nigeria where almost everything you do requires your tax identification number, your TIN. If you do not have these, you can get away with doing some jobs of some clients who don't require it. Yes. But it's important that you have all of these things. Now, I should have mentioned this from the very beginning. If you're thinking that voice work or voiceover or voice acting or um, narrating is a quick way to make money, I can tell you this now. It's a lie. It's a big lie. Because this is a business where you need to invest not just money, not just time, not just effort, but everything blood sweat and tears to get to where you are today i can tell you for a fact that in this business not everyone can do the kind of things that we do kp can record from home one of the other speakers mamuzo can record from home i record from home this is my this is my booth in the background but for you to get to that level you need to have taken certain courses, professional courses, courses that include, for instance, self-directing. So, from the top again, you need to train. Your training exposes you to your niche. Your training exposes you to interpretation and characterization. Your training exposes you to knowing who you are as a voice actor or voice of artist. Then you need to understand the industry. That helps you understand where, which kind of jobs you can get where you, you don't really require your business name or having your tax ID and the ones that require those things. So you know, you know, okay, this is where you're going, this is where you're going. Knowing the industry also it means you also have to learn about the industry rates for the different categories of voice. So... Unlike before, it just it used to be just radio, TV, IVR, and documentary. Um, for those of you who don't know what IVR is, that's interactive voice response. That is um, when you call customer care and they tell you, welcome to GT Bank, your contact center. Please know that this call will be monitored for trading purposes. If you'd like to be served in English, press 1. Yes, that's, that's, um, that's IVR. So back in the day, it was restricted to these four categories. Now, there are, there's, there's so much one does. Voice of God is a big thing now because if you have a, a big voice, you have a baritone. Not like me. I, do, I don't actually have a baritone. But if you have a bass, you know, a bass like your Ahide Adum or your Femi Shuolu or your Lord Frank, or your some of these guys you can knock as much as one million naira per event i didn't say anything though. there is long form narration now anime um audiobooks there's short form narration in terms of e-learning modules those ones, those modules where, um, welcome to blah 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 blah. Here we'll be training you on how to use um microsoft explorer or um microsoft word and blah 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 and they give you step by steps into how you use those things or how what, what modules or whatever it is 
there are different categories and as such there are different price tags attached to them that that didn't exist some three years ago some two years ago you need to understand those things then after that you need to get yourself registered the business name because these are people you're going to deal with the reason why it's called a business is because nobody's going to do your taxes for you nobody's going to do your calculations for you a lot of my colleagues today still write down their jobs on jotters and when client says please send me a list of what we owe you then okay do i send it as a text message or as an email ordinarily you can just do it as an excel sheet and send it to them everything name of job do when it was done whatever ip um, um lp number or invoice number amount and all of that when you do that it makes it easier for the client to say i want to work with this person i want to i because this person makes my life easy and that is one thing that will keep you consistent in this business Usually, you hear certain clients are used to using certain voices all the time. It's not because they are the best in the business, but it's because they give them the least amount of stress. Nobody wants, if you have a fantastic voice and you have an attitude, or you're not good at what, as in, you're not good at relating with people. Mm. Unless client asks for this person, I don't think I'm going to call this person. And that's usually the case. If client does not ask for this person specifically, most likely you will not get called unlike their jobs you come you get they don't even want to know as far as they're concerned i don't he'll deliver or she'll deliver no just send it so having these things at the back of your mind is important now of course by the time you grow into the business and you start doing jobs both for um uh for Nigeria and all of that, you start to get clients who will look at you and say, hi, I like the way you sound. I have this global project. I'd like your voice on it because you're not particularly sounding a particular way. Or I do jobs across Africa because I had to learn how to do it. And investing in this business is important. When you invest, I don't want to expose some things to you, but a lot of us in this business carry millions home every year. And I'm not, I'm not talking about maybe like one million or two million. Oh, okay, it's my time up. Oh, already. Let's not, let's not give them all the juice. They need to come. Like the juice is sweet there. This juice is sweet. It's too sweet. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave me, Uncle Max. Don't leave us. But yeah. Uh, we have our, our other speakers waiting in the back end. And I'm like, oh, gosh, we need a class. Guys, don't you think so? No, tell me. No, tell me. See the kind of, see the, see, 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 see the amount of information. Very powerful information that you're getting. For what? For real. Okay. See, you eh? Bible talk and say, you know, get sense. Person way, carry grain. Olam, no selam. These are grains that all our speakers are carrying in and they are meant for sale. But we have decided to give you a tip of the iceberg. So except this is not an industry that you want to function in. And I kind of love the way that you explained it in the beginning. But there are a bit different compartments in this business. It's not just about audiobooks narration. It's not just about voiceover for commercials. It's not just about being an MC or a speaker, but there's two, like every day, new things are coming up. Now that the world has even gone digital, there are too many opportunities out there, but it begins yeah. with you knowing which part of the opportunity fits your name or carries your name on it. And I yeah. love it when you said you can do everything. If you don't get that, write it down, tweet it, hashtag it, please, and hashtag NOP in your social media, like landing pages and everything. But guys, you, you you guys have we don't need any convincing here do we they are seeing that our speakers are seasoned they know exactly what they're doing they've been in this game for quite a while so guys when announcement reach it's people in the nlp that will first of all hear the announcement thing first and we get special discounts but One. for those of you 
outside looking from the windows don't worry it's okay we would reach out to you graciously but you will not get the least come because you are not associating with us but anyway let's leave it there guy god bless you i respect I'm, salute I'm blessed to the you. king maximus prime <laughs> I am Maximus Prime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is so lovely. Thank you so much for your time. Like this, it was a even pleasure. Me, it was a pleasure. It even a me, pleasure. I learned. Cause bless it, I don't, I don't research. Wait, ah, ah, babe, how can you be in this industry for this long? I don't know these things. Thank you so much. God bless you. I really, really appreciate I'm you. you Guys, keep in touch. Join the group if you can, and if you don't want to, still follow our, our, our. Our speakers on their on their social media um, for Max um, is Eric Erictus Maximus. <laughs> Erictus Maximus. Erictus Maximus. You hear that? <laughs> is um, let me let me type it out. Erictus. Is it one word or underscore? Uh, underscore as Erictus underscore Maximus. Okay, so why are you people using underscore in your username can you please no, wait, wait, wait. calm hard. down calm down it's it used to be it used story. to be the other way around until elo remember elo from big brother elo uh, elo um misspelled erectus so it came up with different <laughs> <way>. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have to switch it to Erectus underscore Maximus instead of Maximus underscore Erectus. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's it in the comment section. Please follow Eric um, for his work to also... But, guys, uh, we are giving it out to you. Okay? When you join our, our NOP group, then you get access to these speakers, but at a discounted rate compared to what they're going to be giving out those courses on the outside. Thank you so much, Eric. God bless you. I really, really, you really, really, really love you. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, moving on quickly is you know, one of the baritone people are here. And the, the person is the person I'm going to call now. Voice of God kind of people. <laughs> All right, guys. So let me just bring on OJ's kids. The man with the boy. Oh dear, wait, I'm looking for your for your profile. Oh. Hey, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, sorry guys, one minute. And I had all of these things down. Don't mind me. Let me just read it from my screen. Okay. Now I'm gonna be calling on Sam. <laughs> he corrected me at some point. Oh, OJ, you did, did you send me your did you send me your profile though? Because I'm looking for it. I can't find it, bro. Bro. Okay. He accused me one time. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. He accused me one time of calling his name Samuel. He said that the name is Samuel. <laughs> okay. Uh, Azazi, I hope I'm correct. Enunciation uh, queen. Say Samuel. I'm going to be bringing on Samuel Ojo, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> OJ Skills, who is a professional voiceover artist, audio producer, newscaster, and saxophonist. Over the years, he has he has done you know he has several jingles, TV commercials, advertisements, and audiobook narration to his credit as a voiceover artist. Popular brand he is privileged to have worked with include Access Bank, Glow, Go TV Nigeria. Trace Ninja and Miss Others. He has also done individually. He has also done individually contracted jobs for local and international clients. With Jesus joy, let us welcome Samuel Ojo. Hi, Samuel. <laughs> is your heart broken? Your expression is not nice. <laughs> Can you hear oh me? my goodness! I've been trying to connect all day long. I've been trying to connect all day long, and um, yeah, I've been internet you connection in has been That's terrible. Oh, sorry. Internet connection has been terrible, and I. Oh wow! It has been terrible indeed. Ah, uh, okay. So I think the network is really dealing with. Samuel, his network is really showing him pepe. Hey, 
on va se network go here okay um let's see if we wait for another second and he's unable to join mamos i hope you're ready for us we might have to drag you out now before time i'm saying <laughs> oh i'm loving this comment um maximus thank you you say you brought it home you did really you really gave us the, the sweet thing the, the bitter the bitter sweet talk no the sweet bitter one <clears throat> it's sweet to see i'm a voice over artist but you need to know that it's it's more than just having a great voice there is a business to this industry and if you don't understand the business then you're not going to grow big okay so i think samuel is having challenges with his connection so i'm a, i'm a, i'm gonna have to bring my sister hmm, another soul sister i have i have can't you see that i'm a blessed woman i'm such a blessed woman like god thank you hey who you who you know hey the way god bless me with just around me with very very beautiful people like mamuzo is just an amazing human being i love you sis so um i don't know is that samuel coming in okay samuel is back oj skill you're back but let's network see. coverage has been terrible i've been trying to connect um for god knows how long now please if you can hear me um just um drop a comment in the chat section you know. and let me know you can hear me clearly we can hear you now. i cannot okay great 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 okay, good great. afternoon everybody it's okay, a wonderful let's saturday and um I mean, I've been trying to connect, so I haven't really been getting the gist and um, the uh, the juice of the stories and the lessons learned so far. But I trust that, given the um, retinue of speakers we've had, um, I'm very, 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 very confident that a lot has gone down today. I mean, uh, talking about vocal care, talking about monetizing your voice, talking about um, finding your vocal power. Um, I'm pretty confident that um, you are learning something and you're taking something away from this summit. Um, I am Samuel Ojo, uh, popularly known as OJ Skills, and um, it's a pleasure to be here this wonderful afternoon. I'm talking about branding your voice. Branding your voice. Now, what is branding? Branding is the process of creating a strong perception of your company or your business in the client's mind, um, simply put. So let's bring that down to branding your voice. So if branding generally is the process of creating a strong perception of your business in the client's mind, then we can safely say that when we talk about branding your voice, we are talking about creating a strong perception, a lasting perception in, um, of your voice, of the business that your voice offers, of the service your voice offers to, um, in, the, in the minds of your client. I mean, so that when clients think about, or when clients have the need for a voice, if your name doesn't pop up as first, I mean, your name should pop up, or your business name, or, the, or your voice, should come up in their heads as one of the very few or one of the very first um, suggestions. You understand? So the goal, uh, the purpose of branding your voice, you know, after training your voice, um, identifying your voice, putting, giving attention to details, building it, you need to brand your voice. You need to make your voice unique. So. Um, it, we can also say that branding your voice means you are taking steps to make your voice distinctive in the industry. Um, over here in Nigeria, the industry is growing every day. The industry is growing every day. And, you know, there are voices everywhere, fantastic, amazing voices. So how do, how, how do we, how do we, um, how do we make sure that as, Talents as voiceover talents, as voiceover actors, as narrators, as um, um, whatever you do with your voice. How do you make your voice stand out? How do you make your voice distinctive? We are talking about branding. So let me start by saying that the very first thing that you need to do is identify your voice. 
identify your voice. Um, when we talk about identifying your voice, we're talking about you knowing exactly what your voice is to you. What are the, character, uh, the characteristics of your voice that you have identified? Do you, can you say specifically what the tone of your voice is? Can you say specifically what the texture of your voice is? Can you say specifically what um, your pitch range is? When you know these things, when you use these key determinants to identify your voice, it helps you to know your strengths and weaknesses. So um, that leads us to the second thing we're going to talk about, knowing your strengths and weaknesses. But you cannot get there if you haven't identified your voice, if you haven't found out what your voice is to you and what it is to the client out there, what it is to the listener. So um, many times, you know, it takes a third party, it takes someone else to help you identify these key factors of your voice. And sometimes if you, uh, if you sit down to it, uh, if you sit down at it, you can identify these um, characteristics of your voice, the tone, the texture, uh, the pitch range, um, how, how long can you sustain, um, how long can you sustain your breath for, breath control and all of this. All these factors that come into shaping your voice, you need to identify them. And that would help you to know your strengths and weaknesses. Um, in the industry today, it's very difficult to say that as a voiceover talent, as a voiceover artist, as a, as a voiceover actor, as a voice actor, pardon, as a narrator, you cannot stick to one, one um, niche. You cannot. You cannot. Uh, because there is so much you can do with your voice. Yeah, whether it's singing, whether it's um, telling a story, whether, whether it's um, just recording IVRs, whether it's narrating, whether it's documentaries. There is so much you can do with your voice, but you will have some areas of strength and you definitely will have some areas of weakness. You need to identify what, this, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. And that, like I said, is based on what your voice is to you, what your voice is to the client, to the listener out there. So knowing what um, your voice can do Knowing what your voice can do helps to put your voice in perspective. So you know that um, there are things that when they come to you, there are jobs that when they come to you, uh, you your mind could say, at rest, say, um, I've got this. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I get jobs and I know that yeah, this particular one is going to be a, a little challenging. Why? Because... I have identified it as my area of weakness. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is, of course. <laughs> so, but sometimes, I, I don't know if um, you can relate to this. Sometimes you get jobs, you get called up for jobs, and when you see, when, when you get the brief, you see the script, you, um, maybe, maybe the producer just tells you what the script is about, what the job is about. Sometimes there is this hesitation because you know it is your area of weakness. But because you've identified it already as an area of weakness, it means you have counteractive methods. I mean, you have, you have things you know you can do in such situations. For example, if you... Um, let me look for a good example. If, if you... Okay, if you are used or if you are strong in um, recording in the English language, but you are by tribe, by ethnicity, Yoruba. And now a client calls you up and says, there is a job that's going to fetch you a million naira, for instance, a million naira. But what they need, what they need you to do is to voice that script um, it's a Yoruba script. It's, it's in the Yoruba language. Now, the client must have called you because he knows you have a good voice, one. He knows um, you are Yoruba. But 
he probably never has even heard you ever voice a Yoruba script. But we're talking about one million naira. So you know that uh, you are Yoruba, but you, this is not something you do often. Would you turn down that offer simply because you don't do it often? Would you? I doubt not. Um, I doubt if you will. But that is not to say that you, you will jump at every and any opportunity just because of the financial incentive. That is not what I am saying. What I am saying is very simple. Identify your areas of strength and weakness. Your areas of strength uh, put you at ease. They give you confidence when you're going into a job. But your areas of weaknesses as identified should prop you, should put you on your toes to say, I have to work on this, this, and this. And um, if jobs come on and uh, I, I, have to, I have to do this, know what you have to do and be ready and willing to take risks. So I've talked about identifying your voice, which would help you to identify your strengths and weaknesses, the limits of your voice. Now, the, the, the purpose of limits, limits are not it's there as a test to how far you can go. So you've got to push yourself beyond limits. So knowing your strengths and weaknesses will help you to push yourself. You know, there, there might be limits. There might be benchmarks. There might, there might be um, how far you think you can go, but you can go much more uh, than that. So if you have identified your voice, if you have identified your strengths and weaknesses, you, like I said, I, I mentioned earlier that you cannot stick to one niche. I mean, I, I have a friend who um, has discussed this with me. Um, this person said um, she would love to stick solely to audiobooks. I, mean, I didn't seek a permission to share this, but of course it's anonymous. Um, and I told her the way the, uh, the industry is, you, it's not advisable to stick to one niche because... Um, there is so much you can do with your voice. And when it comes to branding your voice, when it comes to making your voice unique, when it comes to creating that strong perception of your voice as your business in the client's mind, you don't, you don't expect that um, the clients would reckon with you if all they know you can do, all they know you are willing to do is just audiobooks narration. You don't expect that clients would reckon with you if all they know you can do and all they know you, you are willing to do is just documentaries. I mean, when the client knows that with one voice, he can achieve one, two, three, four things, that registers you in the client's mind. But if the client knows that it's only when he has an audiobooks job or it's only when he has um, a a documentary job he can call on you then you you'd be at the background you'd be at the background you won't be on his mind you'll be at, at the back of his mind so um as a as a voiceover talent as a voiceover artist you need to make sure that your voice is expendable you need to make sure that your voice is expendable now identify your voice identify your strengths and weaknesses and make sure your voice is expendable. Stretch yourself. Stretch yourself. And um, one other thing I can say is that uh, when, you, when you make your voice expendable, it, it actually helps you yourself to see things that you did not know you could do. It helps you to see, to see things that you, you, you never thought you could do. So it's, it's very, very important that you um, brand your voice. It's very, very important. Now, remember I said that branding is creating a strong perception in your client's mind. It's creating a strong perception of your business, of um, what you do in your client's mind. So you need to make sure that um, the goal now is establishing a connection between your voice as a business and the clients you will be dealing with and clients who will be giving you these jobs.
So one thing is um, very important. Consistency is very, consistency is key. I'm gonna use um, an example. I'll use myself as an example. I've done jobs, I've done various, um, I've done various types of jobs. I've done radio jingles, I've done drama, I've, I've done fiction, non-fiction, I've recorded audiobooks, I've done documentaries, profile narrations, and um, quite a lot of different things. And once in a while, and not even once in a while, I think on multiple occasions, I've done these jobs and I never really got to listen or to hear the final production or the output especially radio, radio jingles. Uh, radio jingles, uh, most times I, I, I do them and on very few occasions do I even get to listen to what it sounds like or what it's, but you know, the client is okay with it, the client gives it go ahead and it flies. But sometimes I get calls from people. I mean, people who know me, people who know what I do, people who know um, what I do in the industry. And someone is asking me, Hi Sam, um, did you did you did you work on this? Did you do this? And many times, I mean, ninety nine percent of the time, I would confirm and say yes, I was the one that did it. And some other time, I I, I it probably wasn't me, but maybe somebody who has um, some similarities with my voice. So on different occasions, and not just the same category of of, of voiceovers different categories. So what I want to bring out is that you need to make sure that your voice is consistent. You need to make sure that your voice is consistent. Um, some of the time, you will not recognize my voice because of what I am required to do with my voice. You will not. Hey, hey, make I don't come on. Now, sorry they do. What do you mean to talk? Thank you. I don't follow the phone. It don't happen. It don't share it. What do we talk and say? Today, today, we go kill him. We go kill him. Not the way if we do. Hi, good morning and welcome to the Voice of Workshop. Today, we'll be talking about things you can do. I mean, sometimes you cannot, you cannot recognize, you cannot pin the, the, the same voice on all of these things, but you can do your much, uh, you can do the much to make sure that your voice is consistent. Now, I, I figured out that the reason why people call me many times to say, to ask if I did this job, if, if I was the one on this particular um, project, is because my voice has been consistent. I mean, whether I'm, except for when I, I'm switching voices, but when I am not switching voices, I try as much as possible to make sure that my voice is consistent. And that is why um, someone can go for an event, a conference where um, profile narrations are being read. And you know, the person, this person has been out of touch with me for a very long time. And you see a, you see a random call. I mean, I'm wondering why is, why is this person calling me? It's been a very long time. And this person is asking, I heard something right now. And I, I was telling somebody beside me that it was you. Were you the one? I think it's because my voice has been consistent. So identify your voice, identify your strengths and weaknesses, um, make sure that your voice is expendable and make sure that your voice is consistent. Be, you know, making, making your voice expendable means you are open to options, you are open to um, possibilities, but in all of those possibilities, in all of those options, do the best you can to make sure that your voice is consistent. And how can you achieve this? You can achieve this by listening to your voice. Listening to your voice. Many people don't do this, but I do. Once in a while, I will go back on all, all my previous jobs. I'll select, a few, I'll select a few of them. And I will play back. I will play back um, listening to my voice. Listening to how my voice was on this particular job, how it was on this particular job. Even when I switch voices, listening to how I sounded. So it, it has helped me over time 
to establish some consistency in my voice so that if you hear my voice anywhere, up to 80% um, probability, I would establish that you can tell that it's my voice. So as voice uh, actors, as voice of talent, apologies for that, uh, branding your voice means that you are creating a perception of your voice in the client's mind. And in this context, the client isn't always that person who is calling you for a job or who is going to call you for a job. For a job. The client, your clients could be that person listening to, to you. It could be your next client. You never can tell where your next client is coming from. So hearing your voice um, is, hearing your voice is why the client can think of contacting you for that, for that next job. So identifying your voice, identifying your strengths and weaknesses, developing those areas of weaknesses and reinforcing those areas of strength, making, your, make sure, making sure your voice is expendable, making sure your voice is consistent. All of this, all of this comes into shaping your voice in the industry. I mean, uh, the, oh, is my <laughs> is my time up already? So just wanted to give you some moral support. I I just wanted to picture that. Okay, I see why your voice was sounding consistent. Like when you did two parts in a particular. Oh, oh my goodness! I I, I, hope, I hope you were you were able to hear me because I'm struggling to hear um, Ejiro right now. I hope oh, really? you guys are able to hear me all through. We are hearing you. We hear you clearly. Okay, let me disappear. But let's yeah. Let me. Okay, it's it's it, it, I'm struggling to hear a Jiro speak, so I, I really didn't get what you said. Please, um, please use the chat section, please, so I can get your message clearly. Is my time up? Um, is my time up? Uh, let me check the chat section. Let me see if. Okay, I have five minutes more. Okay, I have five minutes more. Okay, I'll see. I'll see how we can wrap up. So um, I, I hope you've been able to learn one or two things. The goal is to, you know, when you invest in vocal care, when you invest in finding your vocal power, when you invest in monetizing your voice. Now, I, I think um, Maximus must have talked about monetizing your voice. And you, you really cannot achieve that um, status of monetizing your voice, if you haven't branded your voice, if your if, if clients cannot think of um, probable options and your voice doesn't come up in, in one, two, three, four seconds, if you want to really, really achieve, it's a, it's a mix, it's a mix, it's a mix. So the goal is to get to the point where as a voiceover talent, as a voice of artist, your voice is in use. Your voice is in use. Now, if, if you have perfect vocal care, if you, if you have found your vocal power, if, you're, if you have done all of that and your voice is not in use, over time, you will lose all of that. So branding your voice safely, I can say, means ensuring your space in the industry. So branding your voice will help you to ensure your space in the industry. The industry is very big and it's growing bigger by the day. And opportunities are springing up every and every other day. But if you don't ensure your space in the industry, um, I'm sorry, you, 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 might be losing, you might be losing quite a lot. So branding your voice means ensuring your space in the industry. Now, when you have all of these other things, you have good vocal care, your voice is in good shape, you, you've got very good breath control, you can, you can, your voice is expendable, you can take on multiple roles, you can do different things with your voice. Branding your voice, establishing, is, establishing your space in the industry, I mean, creating that strong perception of your voice in the client's mind. On the client's database is your insurance. 
in this industry. Um, I, I really hope that you've learned quite, uh, quite, quite some things. I mean, the goal is the goal is to make sure that our voices don't go out of use. I mean, in telling the African narrative the right way, our voices must be heard. And if our voices do not become brands, over time, they will fade away. So please make sure that you identify your voice, identify your strengths and weaknesses, um, make sure your voice is consistent, make sure it is expendable, be open to options, be open to options. I mean, it, we will get to a point where we can say, uh, what, 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 what's that job? How much is it worth? 50,000 Naira, 1 million Naira, 2 million Naira. No, no, no. I'm, I, have, I have decided to stick to one thing. I mean, that's, we can get to that point. We can. I mean, when you know that sticking to one thing pays your bills, makes you comfortable as much as you want. But in the process, we cannot stick to one thing. And if clients are going to remind, remember you for different things, then it means that your voice has become a brand. Thank you very much, guys. I really hope um, it's been an interesting session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love your closing remarks that branding your voice means ensuring your space <laughs> in the industry. Like, I'm not going anywhere. If they want something in this area, they should call me. If they want, like, I mean, sometimes it sounds a bit contradictory, like, okay, don't niche, niche. I, 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 do, I, I, I don't know if you can hear me, but I, I'm going to have to head over to to the YouTube, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to head over to YouTube now because uh, no it's, been, it's been much clearer for me to access. Okay, no problem at all. I'll, no problem. I'll be on YouTube. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Like, I, I love it. Like, so so in case you're asking yourself, okay, so people say niche, so people say don't niche, this one, that. See, the thing is, I think it's a matter of time. It's a matter of process. When you are starting, you can start wide. As you grow the ladder, then you niche up, right? Otherwise, if you want to niche here, then your growth might be stunted. If you want to niche at the beginning, your growth might be stunted. Go and check it. Most of the people that you see today that are, that are thought leaders in industries, they didn't really, only a few fraction of them started with niching. Most times they did white, and then when they figured out, okay, this is what works for me best, then they niche to that particular audience, okay? Thank you so much, Samuel. That was really, really, really insightful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're going to have like a switch before I bring on my soul sister, who's going to be our last speaker for the day. Not because, she, because, because she's special like that. She's special, and her topic is very like, you need to stay up, okay? Um, I love this comment. Um, I love the, co thank you guys for bringing in the comments. Tommy says, thank you. I enjoyed your session. Thank you, Tommy, for listening and for taking notes and for engaging in the comment section. Daniel, you are you are the bomb. You say, wow, 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 awesome. This is the key. Narrow it down. Build what you want to be heard as your voice must stay on emotion or perception immediately. They hear it. Exactly. Exactly. But even in that, even in that narrowing it down to say, this is my voice. This is my brand. Is to say, but I'm capable of doing all of these things. I can function in all of these modes, but this is me. This is who I am. Fantastic. Okay. So let's go. Let's give, let's, 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 eh? Wait, so let's speak. Ah, okay. I want to fear. Wait, what? Right, guys, I'm bringing up next somebody that is so wait, 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 wait. You see somebody is worded. Ah, ah, ah. I mean, worded, they are worried. Somebody they have words, the way they speak words, the words, the words, the the words are the words are like life, the words are life. You understand me now, eh? <laughs> I'm visiting my Ghana people. Hell is where it's alive. Like, ah, this guy is talented. This is to tell you again that there is another expression to using your voice. It does not necessarily have, ah, it does not necessarily have to be voice over um, narration. It can be spoken words. Being a master of words. Maybe you heard of Amanda, Amanda Goldman. You are, you are aware of her now, right? 
it is spoken words that blow her destiny. And by the grace of God, I am praying this out and releasing this into the into the universe that in a very short while from now, the world will be celebrating this brother of mine because he is so good at what he does and he's been consistent with it. So with Jesus' joy, I want to welcome my dear brother. Do I have your profile, bro? Like, and the way the way he the way he just jumped on this, even within short notices, I'm as saying I'm just I'm honored. I am humbled, really, Shola. I am humbled and I'm honored to have you here on this program. Thank you for saying yes to us. Thank you so much. I have your profile and I'm going to read it now. Can I not? Okay, Adigo Olushola, widely known as Shola Speaks. Actually, Shola Speaks <laughs> is an award winning spoken word poet, content creator, a creative designer, and creative designer. Meaning, when he is not clinging to a mic on stage, <laughs> even his own profile, he still shows himself. Ah, oh, God. Eh? Eh? <laughs> He said, when he's not clinging to a mic on stage, he has his fingers wrapped around his system's mouth. Either way, he's sold out to the expression of his numerous gifts for the glorification of our maker, edification of man, and continued advancement of our society. Ah, see profile. Ah. Solar Speak is a multi-talented computer scientist with a natural heart for literature. He, through his every work of art and science, expressed the depth of God's intent for man, as well as his excellent creative nature as displayed in the process of creation. Oh, Jesus, don't leave me. Don't leave me. What? He says, he simply speaks of the glory of God like everything else in the solar system. Oh, it's so much. Somebody tapping, is somebody tapping? This is too much. My God. Olusha is the founder of the poetry band, God's News um, Casters, hosting perhaps the biggest gospel band poetry concert in Lagos, Nigeria. Aside from freelance engagement, Olushola is the creative director at Fine Finger Prints, a creative firm, and is a creative firm, sorry, and is the lead poet at Penny Monies. <laughs> Penny Monies, oh God a poetry production company. Amongst other achievements, Olushala is a recording artist with a single title, to Miche, and a spoken word EP, Reflections. Shola Speaks has his beautiful work spread virtually everywhere on the globe through virtual media and live performances. His works have been featured severally on popular national TV and radio stations, as well as local and international digital platforms, including Arts World's Lyrical Theatre, California, USA. He was the first ever champion at the I Poetry Freestyle Slam in 2017, first runner up at the Wow 4 Poetry Slam in 2016, and three consecutive times first runner up at the Ask Ifa, Ask Ifa Demystified Tech Monthly Slam in 2018. He was also shortlisted for the La Casera, not a full stop challenge, among many other victories. Whilst it brings the depth of words to the, to the shore of our minds, and the beauty thereof to all as sundry, to all and sundry, his aim is to be remembered for always reminding us of all the things we almost forgot. If it does so, it's like, if I only, 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 only the profile gone, it's enough performance. It's just that I do not, I, I'm not a spoken, spoken word poetess. You, you see now, I could not put the words in the word so that it carries some kind of power that will instigate something inside of you. Anyways, with Jesus' joy, put it together with some wildfire emojis. If I don't see emoji, I will not bring him up. What's all this? What's all this? Where are all the emoji people now? You be people, you, you, you people be sleeping on me. What's all this? Please, oh yeah, please, I'm begging now. Oh yeah, emoji now. Emoji, oh yeah, now. Uh-uh. Be, no, no, don't be stingy with your emoji. Uh uh, guys. Daniel, where are you? Tommy, where is you there? Uh uh, or Re, Remy, where are all these people? Mike, Michelle, where are you guys? Aringze, where are you? Anyways, we'll wait for you. Don't worry. Let me just bring up my brother because he's been here all day. 
watching and cheering up all the other speakers. Ooh, bravo! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, right now, I am very, very timid. I'm very, very scared. Like, that was some amazing read. <laughs> I like I that profile is that beautiful. You read it so well. It sounded like a poem to me, really. Ah, oh, see me over. And they blush, and they blush. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to leave the stage and allow this genius do his thing, okay? See you guys. All right. Um, good afternoon good afternoon guys my name is solar speaks as she rightly said it's a big 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 opportunity to be here thank you daniel it's a really really big privilege and i do not take it for granted it's been always amazing working with um mom Ejiro, and i'm glad i'm here again and my assignment is actually very 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 simple i've had so much to take home i've written a whole lot from the different sessions we have from um directors to Samuel. Samuel, I love the way she was calling Samuel. <laughs> All right, that was a really, 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 really insightful session. So yeah, I would be telling a story and I hope that this story reminds you of something you almost forgot or you probably have forgotten. So this poem, first one is titled Too Late. then I so yeah sorry that was an interruption so this one started too late so recently I saw a picture online a Facebook friend of mine decently dressed in black smiling in a selfie with some roses somewhere behind now guess how many likes she had from a friend I expect her to come online check for this picture online and smile no but much recently I saw a picture online a Facebook friend of mine decently dressed in black smiling in a selfie with some roses somewhere behind my guess who was laying in the coffin a friend who died after six days of thinking about nothing now, nothing. Now, nothing is wrong with this picture, except the note they said she wrote about having about 5,000 friends and followers, yet nothing. Yet nothing is wrong with this picture, except the fact that this girl in a selfie with a coffee was showing her heartlessness to God. Now, sorry, this person keeps disturbing me and I need to really, really stop this. Okay, sorry. I need to really take this and then I'll draw another one. <laughs> stop this. So this one is I said too late. Let me do this other one and then I'll go back to that. I got distracted by some messages here. So last year, a story headlined the front page of our popular newspapers. Upcoming artist heals himself. We saw clues in the mirror he used before his death. He posts YouTube video about how to be cute and a picture of him with friends. I guess he was tired of seeing himself. I saw people flip through his pictures on the pages of papers on the vendor's desk. Some said they loved the smiles and the sense of dress. Some said they loved his eyes, his size, the way he shaped his dress. Fine boy, no pimples. So sweet and simple. I loved his dimples. I wish he was here to hear these people. Perhaps he wouldn't be dead. A few months ago, people posted on their pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, every Karuna is dead. Everywhere, every Karuna is dead. But just like you, I could only search my head because this name did not ring a bell. Because not until then did I know that this man was a sweet sounding spiritual song still trying to be heard. I saw people share his music videos everywhere. Videos they were never proud to share before his death. 
The singles became radio jingles, but his name remained a redo in the middle of my head. I guess he had to be dead before his story could be heard. I guess he had to become history before we could hear his story. And these thoughts continue to linger. Why do you have to die before the world knows you're a singer? Why won't the people of this world give you a gun to trigger until the day you lose your fingers? Why? Why do we wait for people to die before we realize that they were ever alive? And why do we wait for people to die before we testify that they were the reason we stayed alive? I guess, I guess good news is no news at all. But if breaking news does not break our hearts and it's of no use at all, at all, no man is so fit to lift you two feet close to himself. But when you die, six men volunteer to drop you six feet into the belly of the ground. This world is wicked. We wait for your head to be gone before we give you crowns. This world is wicked. Nah, we can't loan you cash to buy your mama a gown. Nah, but when she's down in the ground, we give you cash to fill the town. A friend prefers to buy bottles of beer for his friends on weekends than to share a part of his wealth to restore the health of a weak friend. No one is set to sell your story until it's as sweet as the bread of a photo bomber or as bitter as the story of cucumber. I guess it's easier to sell scandals and it is to help the brother set his tubas and it's too bad. Too bad. Too bad how we're eager to tell people story. Hey, yeah. Ndo, Ekbele, when they fall. But they ignore the peel of banana laying on the floor before the fall. See, we were not like this before the fall. So what's wrong with all of us? Why do you treat people as though they're not one of us? See, what goes to one and still come back to all of us? And listen to this. 29th of July is his birthday, but nobody remembers Obi usually. When he died, nine known newspapers published his obituary. I guess he bought his coffin. A friend who could not afford to buy him a cup of coffee. See, so this will sound like nothing but rhymes, but I'd like to end with this line. If you cannot make us laugh or we are alive, then please don't think to cry when we die. So that speaks. That's too late. I wrote this poem basically. I hope this really, really gets to you. I hope I hope it does a whole lot of things to you. I hope it reminds you of the essence of people, of the importance of letting people know how amazing they are while they are alive. And I'm insisting and emphasizing while they are alive because it was inspired actually by some story of someone I heard who lost the mom. And then prior to that time, she had some illness and there was no money, of course, to get that to me as well. But guess what? On a funeral, on the day of a burial, saw people come around in their amazing cars, beautiful, expensive cars. And you know, they came around to spend and all of those. And that was exactly what made her cry, apart from the fact that her mother died. So then I think we can do better. We can help people appreciate life rather than celebrating their death. So that's the essence of too late. I think it's only too late when you come up, show up at my funeral to tell me I was amazing. Why you could have told me why I am alive and then I could do better and see ways to improve myself. So yeah, I think I have 20 minutes and I should do this other poem I call Monster, because we are, of course, projecting the African story, changing the narrative by, you know, putting our voice out there so people can understand that there's another story to this thing. And, you know, there's a particular saying that I believe you know that until a lion learns to tell his own story, the story will always justify the hunter. So, yeah, there's an angle to every story, depending on which one you're interested in. So Monster is a story of an African son who probably could have been labeled a black sheep. And that's from the perspective of a dad. So Monster is amazing. Listen, <laughs> long story short. So listen, I believe you would really, really love this. So my dad once reported to my pastor, this boy is a bastard. Now, he was not surprised because, of course, he knew the son of whom I was. I was there in a poorly lit corner of our four bedroom flat living room, hands trembling and eyes teary, resembling a poor lost puppy, popping out of my socket as I watched this man who had once wooed my mom into muting other men, marrying him and making babies with him. I watched this man try to pull the hair out of my mom's head, lock them into dreads, hands on her breath. I dread this moment. When I pushed him to the bed, 
unlocked his legs from around her waist and pulled his grips open, hoping that she would have the smallest of strength to catch her breath back into her long sea. If saving your mom's life from the hands of death is what it means to be a bastard, then I think I want my kids to be sons of a bastard too. Two weeks earlier, 16th of September, 2017, I turned 18, got chocolates and cupcakes, a short love poem and a beautiful portrait on the girl I called my crush in school, the feeling, the feeling was cool. But that night, I didn't want to close my eyes to sleep because deep within I was scared of waking up into the first day of being a man, I was scared of turning 18. I was scared that the girl who invited me to feast with her family on Friday night would someday have her face facing my feast, I was scared. And the girl who crushed on me would someday be crushed by me. Leaning on crutches rather than leaning on me, I was scared. And the first step to becoming a monster is becoming a man. Or the first step to becoming a man is becoming a monster. All the box of beasts around me had beds and I was already growing a mustache, I was scared. And the bigger your body becomes, the smaller your heart becomes because she can't take the innocence of a boy into the adolescence of a man. I am innocent, but I am a father's son, and I know the tendency of genetic sickness, so please forgive my weakness. I know someday my dad would see this poem and turn to the next man aside to say, this boy is a bastard. But wherever you are, dad, I'd like you to know that I love you, and I forgive you. Not for the bad things you did, nah, but for the good things you couldn't do. That 27th of January, 2002, you had just returned from the state capital with money and food. My mommy was there in the kitchen, frying the chicken you had brought, and you were just with the men on TV when we heard boom, and another boom, boom. Moment after then, I found my small hands locked in the safety of your grip. My brother was balanced on your back, we were running. Fire was falling from behind. I was calling on my mommy. We were running. Fire was falling from behind. I was falling in love with you. Dad, because the same hands that formed the feast against my mom's face came back to form the feast that kept her son safe. Dad, I forgive you. Not for the bad things you did. No, but for the good things you couldn't do. Dad, last summer, somehow, I found a passport of my mom in her thesis. She was beautiful, brilliant, and this boss baby kind of bow. So you must have been some drop-dead, good-looking, God-fearing, gorgeous guy to have won our hearts with date. So something must have changed your date. Maybe you're not much of a monster. Maybe you're a man kind of star, but the world has taught you never to shine out loud. So you choose to shine in instead. They say it is weakness to shine your teeth. So you choose to shine your eyes instead. But dad, these symptoms don't look good on you. This is not just sickness. I have tasted from your cup of love that you were sweetness. The heavens bear me witness. For goodness sake, you paid so much as a bright price. Paid so much as a bright price. Why should you pay more attention to the world when they try to teach you how to love your wife, how to live your life, dad? I know right now, I sound like a four-year-old boy trying to teach his dad three ways to make babies. But I may not know two ways to make babies. But I know one way to make a difference. It is to be different from the world. The world says, a man is never allowed to cry in public, except he does it calmly. No matter how hot you feel, you need help. Just stay cool and collected. That's exactly how to be manly. But sadly, or gladly, even Jesus worked. Even Jesus swept his father's house clean. So explain me how my sister has to be the sweeper and the husband-to-be only has to learn how to sweep her off of her feet. Explain me why on earth you should not play in the same place you would someday sleep. Explain me these things. A man remains the breadwinner of the house. Yes, a man remains the breadwinner of the house. Yes, but how does the woman owning the bakery make him a loser? I don't get these things. See, I almost forgot. Last Sunday, my dad backed my baby sis to fellowship and the world went like, well, I think he's caring. But if he just do it next Sunday, the world begins to stare from the man on the ceiling to the woman on the steering and it's scary. How a man is allowed to carry the whole world on his shoulders and they call him strong. When he chooses to carry his only daughter, they call him wrong or weak or soft 
We need more such places to use our strength in carrying our daughters, in feeding our sons, in wiping our tears. I am tired of cuts and tears, tired of wiping my mom's tears and blood that the woman with the issue of blood out, leaving with this word. If we do not allow our boys shed tears when they need be, they would grow into blood sucking beasts, shedding blood. Believe me. I know someday my dad would see this poem and turn to the next man aside to say, this boy, this boy. That's one star. That's why I think. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this really, 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 really speaks to you. So thank you very what? much. Thank you so much. What? Thank you, Bill, for having what? me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, what? <laughs> Lord, Lord. Lord. What um, can I do? <laughs> there be a platform for this, our brother, that would expand amen, into the world. Amen, yeah. amen, amen, such, amen. Such deep messages. Right. What? Can you help with your audio, please? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can. I think the, there's something. Can you guys not hear as loud me? As it was. Yeah, it's, I yeah. can't, but it, yeah, I can't, but it's not as loud as it was, Ellie. Really. Hey, eh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what happened. Wow. Okay, but I think just, here, yeah. Wow, just I... wow. Wow. Well done. Thank, thank you. Thank you, so thank you, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Like okay, everybody says they're quick, they can hear me now. Wow. So what is yeah, like too, it's too deep. Oh, it's too deep. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Actually, but, it's, it's, I, 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 really think, I don't know if I have enough time, though. How much, really, how much time do you have left? I really hope. I think, do you want to do one more? I think we're, we're, we're done, yeah, because... No, 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 uh, I'm not doing another one. Yeah, I just okay. you just discuss it. Oh, but, no, but I think no. the message is clear. Wait, it's clear wait for Mabuzo to have um, her session, and then we'll just oh, okay, hear okay, like, okay, a panel. Okay, okay, so everybody okay, can okay, just ask right. questions. All right, that's fine. Wow. I say... Please just be bringing the siren sound. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> having those in the comment section while I bring on my dear sister Mamuzo. And I'm just going right. to read her profile quickly and then we would let her have a session. Guys, just stay with us because once uh, Mamuzo finishes a session, we're going to have a QA session with all the speakers on the screen. So you can ask and direct your questions to them. It's going to be amazing. Just like a like a quick panel discussion, okay? So please don't go anywhere. Thank you so much for staying here with us. I know we've gone a bit, uh, we've gone beyond time, but I, I hope it's been worth it for you. So I'm going to be bringing on our last speaker for the day, Imamu Zonwonkoro, who is a TV and radio presenter, child advocate, and voice actor. Whether she's standing in front of a camera or an audience or recording in a vocal booth, Imamuzo beams with life on the microphone. So true sort of the irresistible voice behind the mic. She's been privileged to work with brands such as Owando, Fanta, MTN, Airtel, Kanekalon, um, United Nations, to mention a few doing commercials and documentaries. Recently, she, she expanded her voiceover career to include audiobook narration and has voiced over 11 books, including books on Amazon's Audible and Mixi, on books africa's first audiobook store or biggest or largest because we gotta speak it out right audiobook store i love mamuzo so much like she's such an understanding sister patient like you can see she's been patiently waiting all like she's been connected since the first speaker knowing fully well that she's going to be the last speaker i love you sister thank you so 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 much okay like please guys let's welcome send some Fireful emojis. Let's welcome our final speaker for the day before we go into the Q and A session and then round this up. I hope it's been valuable so far. Thank you so much, sister. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Ize. I love you very much. Thank you, everyone. I mean, you've stayed on this far. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again. It's been an amazing time just hearing from Eric, KP Voice, Samuel, Shola Speaks. You brought him so much fire. Thank you very much. Woo! I've been totally blown away by all of your sharings and um, discussions. So I'm talking about the part of community. We know. No man is born in isolation. Every man has a longing for belonging. There is nowhere 
you would go to and then you can live all by yourself. You would not survive it. God made us to live in the midst of other people. And before I go into the nitty gritty of my discussion today, I want to watch a video and then tell me what you think about it. So, um, Edger, can you just share that video now, please? Edger, are you there? Okay, um, I do not know if Edger is there. Uh, I wanted to show you a video, but yes, um, I, am. I am. I am. I am there. Okay. okay. I'm just going to play that right away. Okay, let's watch this. Uh, sorry, one minute. gazing and desiring to have that fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm. Then the challenger has come. Come on now, let's go for it.
right, that's beautiful. Thank you, Jerofa. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I guess you watched the video from start to the end. I would like for you to just share with me in the comment section one or two messages you got from the video. And I'll tell you why this is important, because I need to be sure that you're connecting with us. I know this is the last phase of the summit, but that you're still there, still watching, still listening. So let me get your comments now. What message or messages did you get from the video, please? I'd like to hear from you. Daniel, thank you. Daniel says, every man has longing for belonging. That's true. Yeah, I said that earlier. So while I'm waiting for your comments, I will go on. My summit here today is to tell you about the community we are building. But before I go on there, I want to look at Africa as our continent. You know, um, people say that, oh, you know, the Western world is ruling. Well, maybe to some extent that's true. But if you look at your television screens and the contents you see on YouTube, the, the articles you're reading about, they have an underlying element that is African. I mean, Beyonce herself has... I mean, I, I don't know, for some reason, she has fallen in love with the African continent. She, her, her, her 2017, um, um, what's it called? Um, um, Gala Award Night performance, she was decked up in the Yoruba or Rishi outfits. Now, braids is what's trending. In fact, you see I'm wearing my braids. Braids is what's trending in the Western world. They pay so much money to, to wear braids. Now, that's not just Uto. I mean, and then you can tell that even those who are writing, they're writing about Africa. So Africa has gotten recognition and visibility in the global space. Yes, we have. So good on the days when we say that, you know, I want to sound Western, I want to be Western. Our originality now is playing out to us. Now, I want to ask us a question. Imagine if, Disney World approaches us, you know, to do an animation series for them. Because not only are we professional in what we do, we have these experiences. We have we have experienced these are our stories, this is our culture that they're talking about. And there's nobody who can tell our stories better than we. Because besides being professional in this field, this is our day-to-day -day life. I mean, how can you tell someone how to thrive in a society where the system is not working? It's by experience. But Africans have been able to build a lot of, um, you know, a lot of recognition from doing what they do, despite our, our disadvantages or weaknesses or whatever you want to call them. We have Chimamanda who is doing greatly. We have other African people who have covered, you know, the global space and are greatly recognized. They are technocrats, they are thought leaders who are African. Why am I sharing this with you? Because what we want to do is to help you understand that there's a niche in selling the African story. There is a relevance in selling the African story. And we want to position ourselves not to just be, um, you know, um, uh, you know how, to, how to say, um, a drop in the bucket. No, we want to occupy the African space. And so as voice actors, as writers, as editors, whatever creative ability you have, we want to invite you to join us. Narrators on Purpose is our desire is to become an, an the African, I must emphasize that, the African online market for creatives who have, you know, creative abilities within the audio space. So whether you are uh, an audiobook narrator, you are, you have, you are, you are, you are a podcaster, whether you, 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 you're a writer, Anything that has to do with you creating your content in the audio space, we want you to come on board with us. And why is it important to come on board on the Narrators on Purpose platform? I'll tell you. First, let's begin with the convener. You know her. I mean, I've said of Adriel, and I know how energetic she is. Adriel has got sauce, she's got fire, and my gosh, she will push you till you accomplish your goals. She's an, an accountability coach. I mean, she's been reading all the profiles earlier today. So it's my turn now to read out her profile. I don't have it here, but I have a few points I want to highlight about Ajiro and then why we should join her in this journey. You know, Ajiro is an accountability coach. She's a conglomeration of talents. She's a sound engineer. She's an audiobook narrator. She's a podcaster. She's a YouTuber. She's a TikToker. She's um, a recording artist. And now the saliva in my throat is beginning to dry up because I don't want to read too much about Adria right now. But that's to tell you that you are in safe hands. Just knowing the convener is enough for you. Now, personally, I encountered Adria some years back and I didn't really take the relationship seriously until last year, I think, when I approached her and then we started doing audiobooks together. And to be honest with you, it's been one month into another month doing recording. So I'm just saying to you that, hey, guys, if you really want to grow your career, 
this is the group to position yourself with. I mean, we saw from the video, someone said, okay, what I see is that there's a need for a leader in community. Thank you for that solid point you just shared, Daniel. There's a need for leaders. Yes, that's true. And then he said, the kid and I observed, none of them took collaborative action until someone suggested an idea. Oh, Daniel, you were just so in the spirit. And that's it. There can be strength and unity in numbers. Thank you very much, all right? Can I get more? First to mean what you want, then to go for it regardless of the dangers around you on how to get to that thing you want, learn in it. I thank you, Iziani, Iz Cynthia. More so, there was no planning. They solved the puzzles and jumped the huddles as they pursued the goal. Thank you for following through and true. Your comments are beautiful. They're very apt, and I'm glad that you're following. Yeah, so um, now, I, I posted something a few days ago, and I did mention that. You might be a master at growing yourself, developing yourself. So you have the voice part of you that is doing very well. But if you really want to thrive in business, it's not about rising. I mean, I know we almost have looked at those lessons from the, I don't know what animals are, are those meerkats or what? I don't know what animal that is though. But let's look at the eagle. The eagle, you know, the all powerful eagle, I mean, has its claws, it's high up in the sky. So naturally, the eagle should be the one winning over the meerkat. And I'm calling the meerkats just because I don't know what exactly the, what they are called, baby. So just pardon me, you know. Um, so naturally, the ego should be the one on top. And that is it. That is you who, by your own strength, I mean, by your own, you know, um, singular effort, you are able to hone your voice skills. You're watching YouTube videos. Maybe you're attending some lectures. You're, you're getting you know, attending some lectures. But then if you really want to go far, you have to just, it does not about rising up. Will you be visible? Will it be recognized? Can you outweigh the challenges that this industry has? And that is why this collaboration is important. We're not coming to sell to you, um, um, oh, just come, let's have a Facebook group. No, we're selling to you an idea that will make history. And I'm not bragging. I'm not being braggadocious right now. I'm stating the facts, which is why I started by letting you know how Africa is evolving and how we're going to plug into that niche. There's a paradigm shift already in Africa. Our content is already selling. And imagine if we're able to create content and then sell them out there. So of course, what you stand to gain, joining narratives on purpose. First and foremost, you will get hand-holding trainings. I know there are dozens and millions of them, in fact, all over the world. Some are very, in fact, most are very pricey, but here you will get hand-holding trainings at affordable rates and by ACE professionals. What you saw today is just the tip of the iceberg. I guarantee you that what you'll be seeing in the coming months will totally blow your mind. All the nitty gritties, the intricate details, we'll dissect them for you and then we will let you understand. If I will hold your hand from one face to another, how to grow you through your industry. And remember I mentioned that Adria is not just an audiobook narrator. So there's a lot of other things that she does. And because, I mean, she's already itching. She wants to see that we, we train people who will, who will deliver professionally, as well as keep in mind that they are African, they are regional, they're not intimidated by the Western world in any way. So your voice, the way it is, eh? That pigeon, when you feel speak, you will speak up. The Igbo, the Yoruba, you will do one. And you will do it so well. So we're really, we're here to teach you. I mean, even if you cannot speak a particular indigenous language, for instance, and you want to, you know, vein to that line, we will teach you how to do this things because we want to sell the African continent and tell our stories the right way. Now, I, I know that you have seen um, Black Panther and some other films, you know, that were centered around Africa. But I mean, kudos to all the guys who did, who, you know, who did excellently well with those films and those contents. They leverage on the professionalism to deliver, you know, their parts. But imagine us telling our story. You know, a woman who was, who is, who's been raped will not need anybody to help her tell the story. The way she'll deliver the story, it's natural, it, it, the emotions, the passion. So we're the ones who, we are the ones who have the experiences, the African experiences. We're the one with the culture. We're the one, we, we're the one that have the tone, the tonality, the accent, the originality. And so we will we will do us. It will be easier, far easier for us to represent ourselves in the global space. And I dare you, brothers and sisters, I don't want to sound church right now. <laughs> I dare you, brothers and sisters, that narrators on purpose will take you far. Now, I also like to ask you one more question. I'm sure you came here on purpose. You have a goal in mind. What is the goal you want to achieve in 2021? I mean, for your career. And now I'm speaking to writers, podcasters, I'm speaking to voice actors and speaking to everyone within the space, just share in, your, in the comment section, what is that one goal you want to achieve in 2021? And I'm asking because I want to tell you something about it. So please type, 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 type now. Let's hear from you. Let's know what is it that you want to achieve in 2021? And I remember what they say that, I mean, you are 80% 
the, the uh, you are about 80 percent you know influenced by the five people who are who you surround yourself with so while you type those contents remember if you do not sorry an interrupt oh shit an interruption jesus christ oh no i'm sorry about that if, if paul came in so sorry about that so if you do not have people you know surrounding you who are in the same who are you know journeying or making the same journey as you are this is the this is the time to begin to make adjustments. Your close friends should be voice actors like you. If you're a voice actor, your close friends should be editors like you. Because I mean, like the other day, I had a challenge with um, sending a file to one of my clients. I had to call on my my friend, and then he was able to help me out. So we're building a community that can be trusted. There's friendship. There's bonding. There is the professionalism side of it. And like I told you earlier, we'll have a couple of courses that'll be dishing out, and then we'll have membership packages. So depending on how far you want to go with us. You will sign up and i'm encouraging you now don't wait oh so i have some chats are coming in okay um what just happened what happened <laughs> network has done this it's magic the network has raptured mamuzo what's that this network is disrespectful <laughs> network is my fault i think oh, it touched okay. the turn off button so forgive me uh, forgive me yes okay so what you stand to gain of um i mean as a member of narcissism purpose like i said earlier okay let me interrupt myself please so daniel says 2021 goal to make my podcast better in line with building my personal brand i love that personal brand i don't know how much of personal branding you've been doing but you know oj's just started some real tips and you'll hear more of that later so i said hand holding training that are affordable that's number one number two we have affiliations i mean if you know ag real she already has an existing app mixy phone book is is africa if i said to her let's call it africa's number one audio book store so i'm smiling right now i mean we might be young but we're not inexperienced at all adriel has come a long way and i keep going to adriel because you might say okay who are the people behind this and which is why i'm saying adriel most of the time now so that you're you're very much relaxed about what we're about to do you know so that we have affiliations with mixy fun books mixy form is an audio book so which means that you have regular jobs i've been getting jobs myself so you have regular jobs another we also have affiliations in dubai i don't want to mention our media partners yet so that i don't just blow you away with bbb talk i say oh this guy now bbb talk no for real we have affiliations in dubai so we want to welcome you on board to join us i know that there's fiber and a number of other international voiceover communities but this one now our own we are Africans, so let us tell our spirits the right way. That is our mission after all. And then also, um, we want to be able to grow the community to a point where we are able to give um, holistic service. So we can provide a holistic service. I mean, we, we have writers who would write the stories. We have voice actors who would, who would tell the stories. We have editors who would edit. Jump full ground though, we need to get started. We're just looking for people to join us to do this work. I have been working already for, for this platform I have. We need more hands to be on deck. We need to train more people. We need to get everybody on board. Okay, so do not forget that Narratives on Purpose is the African, that's what we're designed to become, the African online marketplace where creatives can express their creativity within the origin space. And we want to do this by offering our, our, one of our unique points is to offer these services at an affordable price. Yes, I know audiobook narration is expensive. If you check out the cost, it will allow you. But you know what, we're trying to, you know, give service and then also have gigs come very regularly. So we'd have, um, um, you know, we'll offer affordable services quick services too so this could be your side hustle you don't have to struggle you know to be making money this is one side hustle that will sustain you okay now let me not brag too much because eric already told us that in the voiceover industry it takes time to invest and it takes time to build but truly i'm telling you this you have a great potential with us and let me just i'm run up by saying this that no man thrives in isolation and your dreams and goals for this year are possible if you let Narcissus on Purpose take your hand and walk you through the journey, just like the meek hurts, you saw them, you saw how they overcame, how they fought and got the fruits. I mean, naturally, they would not have flown if someone had not initiated something. Now, someone has initiated this idea, we've got to fly. So, someone says, I want to be good at growing myself and others in ordinary things, script writing, broadcasting, and build my own brand. That is why we need you here. Is Yan and Cynthia. I hope you already signed up. So, right now, go to our Facebook page, look for 
narrators on purpose were called NOP. Um, the same um, um, logo you saw on the on the seminar um, posters, you will find it there. Click on the uh, on, on the sign up button. You will be asked a few questions, answer them, and then an administrator will let you in once you have fulfilled the simple simple criteria. So thank you for listening to me, and I wish everybody a good and great 2021. Together we will rise. Together Africa will shine through us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mamuzo. You see why I say I love this woman? Like, she's very, like, she cut. <laughs> if you're happy, we are blowing people up, please. <laughs> Thank you, boy. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. So you. Much. Thank you so much. So without further ado, because my head, my head was swelling like it was doing gym, gym. Before it would blow, let me just bring back my speaker so we can have a session, like a, like a okay. panel session now. So guys, Start sending me your questions. Um, back end people, I'm about to put you live. Gather yourself very well. <laughs> Arrange yourself. Sweet Zazzy, I can't see you. I'm putting you up in about five seconds. So please let's put ourselves together. Um, I think a couple of people have network issues. I think OJ has network issue. So he might not be able to join on this panel session. But then we have all these amazing, lovely faces. Uh huh. Yeah. Telling you, Daniel, she's too good. She's too good. <laughs> oh no! Good to see you. Thank you for joining. Okay, so see my lovely, lovely, lovely speakers. I think Samuel is the only one not here. Um, Samuel, yeah. Samuel could not. I think maybe network. Samuel, if you're still connected to YouTube, you can you can join us in the comment section if you're unable to join back end. But yeah, yeah, you have it, guys. So please start churning in your questions for our our dear speakers here. We're gonna do this for like ten minutes, and I'll let you guys go. Thank you. So like you guys have been amazing. Like no no. Yeah, and Ufuma, yeah, Ufuma, Ufuma had to leave because she had to take care of her baby. Um, so yeah, so um, mm -hmm. you back. welcome back. Okay, so guys, let's have your questions. But man, I just want to say a very huge thank you to all of you here today because you guys are just amazing. Now, when I, when I blow my mind, you blow my mind away. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I, I, I guess I had a question when I was on earlier on. Uh, I think it's from it was from Ore. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, she was um, asking about H factor. Yes. Um, yeah. Hmm. In fact, my <laughs> dear sister, I want to believe that is a she. <laughs> if, um, I was on that road. <laughs> I was on that road. I remember. <laughs> I, re I remembered a couple of years back when I started venturing into exploring my world of voice um, acting and all of that. It wasn't even my mentor, which is one of the I, I concur with one of the facilitators that said, I think it was Maximo. Yes, who it was. That, uh, mentor mentoring, mentorship, <clears throat> guidance, and all of that is very necessary. She, she was the one that observed it. So that is one thing. It is a good thing. It is a bold step. It's in fact, it is a good leap that you've identified it, that problem. Mm. So getting it solved is a bit easier. It is definitely going to be with exercise. Yeah. One, one of the things I started with then, I remember, is I got um, um, uh, sentences that had a lot of vowels. Because the issue is always with the Yoruba. I don't know why this thing always... I don't think it's just bad. Yoruba now. I don't think it's just only Yoruba now. Because I think for I've the heard H it. factor, For the H factor, is mostly think, Yoruba. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We have with Northerners, maybe Aousa, Fulani, yes. who have the PF. Yes. Yeah. But for, for the Yoruba, mostly common amongst the Yoruba-speaking uh, community. Yeah. And the H factor. R R L, and I'm black people. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> so, uh, darling, or right, you are not alone. Everybody has one uh, flaw or the other. Identifying it and accepting it is a bold step 
towards Absolutely. making sure that you overcome it. So um, perhaps we will just have to uh, connect so that we would uh, uh, run some exercises on it. But in case there are other people who also has it, who, who also have it, um, get a lot of words that start with the vowel sounds. So you have to be very intentional about it. Mm. You also need still to go through the recording process. So you have to record it and listen to it. So if you, you will be the kind of person that would say, Apple, I want to hit Apple. So now it works with the placement of your articulators. Yeah, it also works with your vocal cords. So these are the things that you really need to pay attention to. So it's not once we can just discuss like this. Mm. It has to be very practical. So we will get we will get words, we'll get sentences, paragraphs that contain a lot of words that start with the vowel sounds, and of course a lot of other words that start with the he. That's the H. It sound, then we'll practice. You read and read and read until you are very conscious okay. about the pronunciation. So don't worry, you are not alone. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zazi, for handling that. Um, I think another question came during, I think it was, wow, was it Maximus' session or APs? I can't remember. Nothing came during my time. I could have answered it. Ah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I think something came, but I can't remember now. Okay. Um, I, was it KPC's uh, session? But there were questions. Guys, please send me your questions again, please. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, ACIE says, let me put this up. Ezian says, I... Wait, wait, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me correct it. It's Ezani. 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 Sorry. Now, Papa, what would they talk with that? Understanding culture is also important. Yes, yes. I want to learn more vocabularies to help me write well, too. Please, I need help. Okay. Um, Do we have writers in the... I think we have writers on the group, but I don't, I'm not, I don't know for writers among our speakers here except for ufoma who is not here so um but for vocabularies i think that one is is is, is a it's a no-brainer you need to read a lot so as you read and you get acquainted to new words you have your own vocabulary jota or or or, or, or a catalog of new words and as you learn them apply them look mm -hmm. for opportunities to apply them if even though if it if it makes you feel like you are particular, but it's okay. But apply them because it's in, it's, in, it's, it's in the application that you that you get to you know get better at it. Um, another question came says, I think this is Daniel. Is that a question? Okay, Daniel says, as an aspiring great podcaster, with just a couple of episodes, I passed after episode three, and um, I've been lingering. Started with the aim of making public speaking better. Okay, so okay, so then this is the question. Question one: What tool is the best to start for podcasting? Um, there are so many. When you say tool, do you mean tool or platforms? That's platform to publish on. Because if you say tool, you have your phone number one. You can use that one as a mic for podcasting. If your phone is clean enough, or worst case is you can get you can get a, a lapel mic. One that comes handy that I've, that I've um, recommended to a lot of people is um, what's it called now? Um, but by uh, Boya Dynamic, Boya Dynamic Lapel Mic. You connect Boya Dynamic if you are on Android, for example, download Audio Lab, connect your Boya Dynamic mic to your Audio Lab, use the mic as the source, and you have a clean recording. If you're not in a noisy noisy space, of course, you so you have your space, right? It's, it's the recording is clean. Now, when you edit it, if you don't tell somebody that that's how you recorded it, they might not even know. So that's a one, that's a two. But when you talk about the platform, that's where you publish it, then there are several options to choose from. But the easiest one to go to is Anchor. And recently, I think Spotify just acquired Anchor. And I'm like, what? Like yesterday or so. So, so, so yeah, Anchor is one place to go to because Anchor helps you share to other platforms. But there is also... Um, 
Buzz Sprout. I think I have some clients that use Buzz Sprout. They 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 use Buzz Sprout. They say it's, um they like it, right? So um I think that that works. So then that's if you're looking for platform. So there are two different things. We're talking about the tools or the platform. I hope that was clear. If not, you can ask again. The second question says, how do you maintain a drive in talking absolutely alone? Because at a point, I spoke for an hour straight. Ah! Wow. <laughs> that is not... <laughs> you, you are an expert at this, please. Answer that first or somebody. Somebody answer that. <laughs> Sir, I, I need to get... I'll do... I'll do we needing help with talking for a long period of time. Is that the question? Well, no, I, I think I, I think I think what he means is that um, on his podcast he was the only speaker and he spoke for like an hour. Oh, oh, okay. So what does he need help with to sustain his energy and his drive? <laughs> is the drive? Oh, yeah. well, it depends on it depends on what you're talking about. It depends on your message. It depends on. Um, if you're making sense out of what you're saying, um, it depends on the feedback that you get. Yeah, if you have what to say, just like um, for my EE -E, uh, mentioned earlier on, if you have what to say, if you're well prepared, if you're you're, you're coherent, then that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, with podcasting, you can always have your water by your side and always take the seat so that you can lubricate um the necessary uh, vocal um tools um however if you think it is too long too dry i guess another thing you can have is um what is it called now sessions is it sessions or um you can have sessions. interludes yeah sections yeah. yeah you can have interludes um oh. you could have a yeah. game included in it you can you could have um it, that's why I, I really need to you really need to be very very intentional about the message of that platform so yeah. that you will know what to introduce do you want to introduce a music do you want to introduce spoken word do you want to introduce games do you want to introduce perhaps a challenge it depends on um the objective of the show and then that will direct your thought and idea onto what to introduce Absolutely. or add up to the one hour session. Interesting. Um, I'd, like yeah. to, I'd like to add to that. Um, during my time in radio as well, as much as possible before any topic, you must break down your topics into segments so that you can assign a certain number of minutes per segment. Sure. So, you know, it, it helps you control. It helps you mm -hmm. control what you say for a certain number of minutes before you move yeah. to the next topic. And, you know, it helps also in the transition. So mm -hmm. you, that's why some of us can talk for hours and then they tell you, guy, you've been, you've been talking for like four hours. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you lost track of time. Yeah, yeah, that's very so, important. Okay, so just be very particular about your objectives, objectives of the show, and um, that will help you say, be a, break it down into segments and you'll be good. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, I think he now clarifies that is the yeah, platform. Okay, so I guess so. So I think you have the answer to that. And for the lapel mic, it's called Boya Dynamic. Boya Dynamic. Is it Boya? No. The B E Y E R. Dynamic. No, no, no. There is Boya actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean, okay, you're talking about the you're talking about the oh you're talking about the Boya mics. Yeah, the Boya mics. Yes. Okay, yes. no, that's Boya. There's a different mic. It says, yeah, there's, there's a, no, the Boya. No, Boya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one is expensive, you know. Oh no, yeah, mm -hmm. that one is your brother. I'm talking of Boya. Boya is oh, yeah, Boya. Uh, Boya is, yeah, Boya is like the lapel mic that can work with your phone. I think it's less than ten thousand naira. So it's a it's a quick investment mm -hmm. that you can actually have one around here. Yeah. Yeah, um, Arinze says this is for KP Voice. It says you mentioned some edible stock that help the voice. I think it would be great if you could also mention a few that would be great to stay away from too. Oily foods. Oily foods. <clears throat> I know. That's, that's the eye. <laughs> okay, talk. Oh yeah, talk. I know, I, you know, you know, it's Maximus. Maximus, Maximus, Maximus. <laughs> Maximus yeah. is prime. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. So, am I allowed to talk? 
So, uh, yes, please go ahead. Okay, see, like I said when I started, it also depends on the category of voice you're doing. Because true, sometimes true. it's shaping your voice. For example, because I'm an opera singer as well, I do mm -hmm. oily food, I do cold water because I'm a bass. Uh, you need so, your... Okay. Yes, so I need my voice to be as thick as possible because if I'm doing a song and uh, and it's not coming out as a bass, everybody's looking at me like, and I thought he sings bass. <laughs> so it depends on the category. If you're doing radio primarily, you're doing documentaries pr primarily, I wouldn't think mm -hmm. that. Because let me give an example. One of our guys in the business said to me, Eric, if you want a deep voice, you need to, let's, you need to learn to smoke. Mm -hmm. yeah i've heard that yeah. too i've heard that too mm -hmm. but, that a lot. but as, as much as that is true it also isn't as true if there's anything like that no 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 because let me explain why talking about over time over time if negative effect it has on your voice exactly. over time yeah. you know what i mean Start talking about, he's been so in the business for over 40 years so i don't know well he's our like, well, you, you know I guess, what, what i'm talking about well some people I, are I born naturally different strokes for different folks Yes. So I think what should happen is, as much as possible, the first step is know thyself. Exactly. Once you know, your, exactly. once you know yourself and you know what you're capable of doing, it tunes you to what, your, your, what you can take and what you can't. And For someone like KP, KP is a top vocalist. So when she's singing some of those notes sometimes in the recording studio, you know that she cannot follow me and drink cold water. <laughs> Well, and, and, and then I guess I guess it's safe to say I'm giving this advice from my perspective. What has worked for me over the years, and what mm. is still working for me even now. Okay, mm. so and of course that, that doesn't also say that you don't need a coach. Like Eric actually said after I, after I was done with my own session, you need a coach to help you better your art, exactly. to better your voice of art. You need a coach, whether in singing or just you know as as a voice of an artist or whatever it is. You need a voice What's coach it? to for help me, you guide you. For me, like you said, I, I think like what will work is if you want to. So oh, let's hello, go guys. Can, can you hear me? What? Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you we can hear, hear you? Now I want to use deep voice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you can't see my face. <laughs> I'm, I'm in transit, so I wouldn't want to distract. <laughs> oh, um, with the, like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maximus. <laughs> uh, Maximus, now you've got the top. Oh. <laughs> so I, I I want to talk about um how eating habits can affect your voice. You understand? My perception is that you do what works best for you. You should know what works for you, and that's what you should do. Uh, sometimes, for for me, what I don't do is I don't take cookies. I don't take anything crunchy, anything that's that is likely to get stuck in my throat. I don't, I, as much as possible, I run away from them. Um, so occasionally I indulge myself in cookies, occasionally. But many times people offer me stuff like chin chin or um, plantain chips or, um, or regular biscuits or crackers or something like that. And when I, when I refuse, it's, I, have to, I, I have to explain that it's because of my voice. I mean, you you could be you could be doing it, and it has no effect on your voice. But if you identify, I, like when when I when I when I spoke, I I said something about identifying <laughs> your voice. <laughs> Part of identifying your voice. Eric is <laughs> You know, you know, people like people like Eric now they can. I, you know, people like Eric can do that and get away with it, but I, I, I tell you, I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. Compare, so identifying your voice also entails um, knowing the things, knowing the things that your voice can entertain, the things that your voice can can embrace. So if you know those things, you 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 not you manage your voice properly. But you know. I, I, I think I was discussing with Ejiro some, I think maybe a week ago or, or thereabouts. I told her that um, I, I haven't really been in the booth for a while now because I, I had to see my ENT um, specialist who told me to rest my voice because mm -hmm. she suspected that I had been um, overusing it. Well, well, the reason, the reason wasn't far-fetched. I've been working on audiobooks for quite a while now, so... Uh, my voice, my voice really should have been stressed. So, I mean, some people 
maybe because jobs are coming in and um, the pay is good, want to well, stretch it a, little, a little further. Right. Exactly. Want to push it. Exactly. But it's not. It's not so. It's, it shouldn't be so because if it eventually crumbles. I mean, There's then where, no where, where, where's the, where's the exactly. ability to make that money? They, they, yeah, you, know, exactly. you have jobs and you can do them. Let me ask so, you a question. Okay. Let me ask you a question here, Sam. Anybody can okay. answer this. Is that how do you then deal with clients when that happens? Because sometimes you mm. don't even envisage that, right? That that will happen. So you already promised a timeline to the clients. And now mm. this timeline is being passed okay. because obviously let, let, you're not a horse. And this is happening. Mm -hmm. Let me say so, something about that. Let me say something about that. And I, I, I think um, Eric would allude to this because he's been in the business for a very long time. I think it still boils down to branding your voice. I mean, I, I know there are some clients I have that will be willing, will be willing to give you that time and space. True. You understand? It's because you've established that perception in that client's mind. He knows he knows he can't get it better anywhere else. Not because there is actually nobody better than you are, but because mm. over time he, is, he has become comfortable with working with you. So um, sometimes you just have to appeal to the client to give even yourself, you yourself, eh? when you know your worth, it helps in you know, relationship with the client. Yeah. You know, if you if you know that you, you if you know you don't have a good standing with the client and yeah. your voice is in bad shape, you just simply tell the client that ah sorry, 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 I'm I'm not available. I'm not available. I dare I dare worry. I know if you I know if you I know if you enter studio now. You yeah. understand? You look for an, an yeah. excuse why you cannot do it. But if you have a good relationship, you have a, you have a good standing with the client, you can open up to the client and say, this is what I'm going through at this particular time. Can you give me um, till weekend, let, let my voice rest a bit, and then I can come up and do this. You know, I believe that 98% of the time, the client, if the client has a good relationship with you, will be willing, except if it's an urgent situation. Yeah. Except yes. if it's an urgent situation. So that's what I think about um, exactly. what to do Thank in cases you. like that. If, know your worth and on that basis, negotiate with the client. Thank sure. you. So we have a question for Shola. Shola speaks. Are you here? Um, your video is not on, but I hope you can hear us. Shola, are you here? Hello, Shola. Are you here? Can you hear us? Shola, come online. Come online. <laughs> Hello, Shola. Please let us know if you can hear us. We have a question for you. Um, okay, okay. So while he he's still coming, Hello. Yeah. let me add to what um, OJ said. Yeah. So um, one of the things you need to understand in this business is that you are not indispensable. Mm. That's true. Another thing you should also understand is that sometimes some jobs are fire brigade. Yep. True. Yep. Yep. True. Yep. So yep. I've been in different sides of this equation where I'm either the client or I'm the service provider and I lost my voice and they need the job ASAP. Mm -hmm. I've had clients tell me, let me hear how you sound right now. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, we can manage this one now. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm talking about. We've been down this road. Nah. You know. <laughs> we don't say now. Nah. You don't say no. Today. And there are some of them. Exactly. Who tell you, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I have to call someone else. Then a few days later, they will call you and say, eh, we called somebody else. The person couldn't do it the way we wanted you so, to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah. when you so when we talk about conversion in voiceover, we're talking about mm -hmm. the fact that some jobs are tailored to how you sound or how you deliver. Mm -hmm. for job, so for jobs like that, you can actually decide, or you can act, they can actually wait for you for to you. have your voice back. But it's not an excuse. You need to have, find the solutions to get your voice yeah. back within six hours. For my for myself, example, my wife makes this mean ginger tea. I would chew ginger like I'm crazy. Mm. 
<laughs> and it and works. She, and she knows I talk too much. So she, there's this tape she puts on my mouth, so I wouldn't say anything for like two or three hours. <laughs> wow. Much. After the two, three hours, Ooh. I'm back again. Oh, wow. So, so you always have to remember that your standard time, delivery time for any client is 24 hours. Within the 24 hours, you need to find your voice. Mm. It's standard. Mm. Wow, that comes with the discipline of the craft. I love Absolutely. it. I love Absolutely. Absolutely. Shola, can you hear us now? Hmm? Shola, can you hear oh, us? I don't think Shola is here. Okay, so I, I think, me, I don't know. I'm not a spoken word artist. And I don't, I mean, I I don't use scripts most often times for, for presenting, for example. But like, even though I don't, I can use pointers or point bullet points to kind of yeah. know the flow of my of my speech right but for spoken word like i don't start i think it comes with practice so shola i wish you are here to, to come and answer this question mm. <laughs> man i think it comes with practice though but i think all right saying like how um you know how do you read several lines for a stand-up so it's like if you are recording it, it's easy you can put teleprompter in front of you and find a way around it but what if you are live? How do you? How are you able to remember? I think it comes with practice. Just by the time it's like it's like music. Like if you if you score a song very well, you will remember the lyrics, even if it's twenty stanza. If you yeah. score it well and like practice it, you will remember all the lyrics. Like, yeah. Because it's like it's also said, is there some condition that makes it hard to remember song lyrics? Oh, condition. You think I think so. so. <laughs> when you're nervous, when, when you're nervous, do you know, yeah. funny enough, with all my years of singing as a professional, when I'm getting ready to go on stage, there's this few seconds of tension that comes in. I don't know Everyone. if it happens to others, it but it happens to everyone. Me. Everyone, everyone, you know. Sorry, come again. Yes, yeah, so it's not to every, for everyone. And many people, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. You know, so well, I think, I think one, one of the secrets to uh, remembering your your lines or your lyrics is just calming down and then remembering when you were practicing. I guess that would help. Yeah, I love it. For me, mm -hmm. me sometimes it's only a few. Okay, Shala is back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Finally. Finally. <laughs> Finally. 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 Time. <laughs> no, no, don't no, go there. No. <laughs> oh my. Oh my God. So, uh, uh, you can go and say, let's hear from you. Okay. I'm sorry. I had some technical this thing. Um, I think okay. it was so I'm so open up. So I saw the question, but I think I should. I, I didn't get the last line. I should guys telling African stories or something. But I got. Oh, so that's a different one. Okay, please, can I read? Can you read the question out, please? I'm not sure. This you can one it. says, I know one can read a key when one's doing it from home, like if you're recording. But please, how do you read several lines for a stand up spoken word session without looking into a book? Aside best practice. Aside practice. Okay, um, what I would say is, um, for me, I would say what applies to me because, of course, like um, it's been said earlier, I'm trying to remember who said it man, know thyself. Um, this is how I, I get to do my work. My works come first from my mind then to the paper. Not like it, co it goes from the paper to my mind. So it's more like I'm just writing it down. Don't forget. So usually I already have it in my head. So while I'm working in the process of, um, in the process of compiling, compiling details, compiling stories, imageries, I already have them all jumbled up, mumbled up in my head, but they are not arranged. So the arrangement is on the paper. So it, it goes a long way in helping me to memorize because I already know what I want to say. I have a picture of it. So if I'm going to break it down to someone else, I would say that there should be a particular picture in mind. And that's where theme comes to play. So you have to know exactly what you are saying. You have a good picture such that even if you forget a line, you can easily manipulate. Mm -hmm. I have a slide. I have a slide on, on Instagram there on IG where I talked about how to memorize your poem. I'm trying to see if I can remember some of them. So one of the um, tips is that, of course, you use as many images as possible. 
So images are like tying words to pictures. So when you, even if you forget, if you remember the picture, it brings back the point. It brings back, the point. and that's also where originality comes into play. If this is your, of course, you know what to say. You might forget how to say it, but you definitely can change it. Mm. So then, yeah. So long, like saying this poem that I did. I think it's about seven minutes or so. I oh, wow. I told it. Because, yes, I told you because I was practically seeing the story play out in your mind. Oh, network. Oh, 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 oh. I, I feel like I, I love that point. This, as you were talking, what is coming to mind? Innovation. Yeah. What is coming to mind? Can you hear me, please? So I was it was great. Mm. Okay, go for it. Go for it. Yes, yes, now. I think. So, is you okay now? Yeah. Okay, so, so I was saying, um, when you break your poems into stanzas and each of them have a particular picture it's driving, it helps you to easily wow. remember. Each, each, each stanza that I was saying there, popped a picture, a particular picture in my mind. I was practically seeing those scenes. And that's where originality comes into play. So because I created them, I have an imaginary, um, sorry, I have an image of them. So that's that. And then of course, to memorize, you have to speak out loud first to yourself. I'm trying to pull these things together. It's actually really some long stuff. You have to speak out loud while you're rehearsing. So you're actually rehearsing to the public. You're saying it, it then transcends from you just, you know, trying to memorize. Because if you memorize your poem, actually, you forget. You have to own your poem. What do you want to memorize? You have to own it such that it's not coming from your mind any longer. It's coming from your soul. So even if they wake you up, you're saying it like it's just a normal. It's just the way you sing. You get. So you're not memorizing lyrics when you sing. You you are owned it. You understand it. So when I'm saying the poem, I'm not trying to remember the poem. I'm saying it but in a particular pattern because I already have specific words for them. It's actually really, really long, and I don't know if I have all the time to this, but I will I'll refer the post to the person. It's best really need to go deeper. Yes. So, guys, yeah. go follow Solar Speaks. Solar Speaks on Instagram so that you can get um, that content. Um, um, so, there's a question for all of you. Apart from <laughs> Why do you want to know? <laughs> Oh, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I sing, but not professionally. <laughs> I, I think like almost uh, natural for voice actors to also be able to sing, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it's just, it comes with a challenge, it's like an extra topping on the cake, an extra icing on the cake. So yes, we can sing, but we're not going to be professional. I can sing. But I'm not like a uh, Maximus, uh, the KP voice, who are you on the stage, you know, singing your own song. I compose, I compose my own songs, by the way, but I'm not really taking it very seriously as to maybe go to the studio, record a song, and then put it out there for everyone to hear. But who knows? Maybe, just maybe, one of these days, I might be challenged by one of these people here and then do my own thing. <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> Okay, shall I yeah, ask I, you want to ask a question? Oh, yeah, someone asked a question earlier that I saw about the, the um, audio and video issue. So they asked, what are the tools you could use to begin your podcast? Um, program? Yeah. So I asked someone of them I use. Of course, someone, you already mentioned um, this popular. Yeah, so I have some other extra tools that you can, even if you're not on that particular platform, you can use this um, app. It's actually free. All of the apps I've mentioned are free. There's this app we call um, Audio MP3 Converter. Converter. You have to convert your normal phone recording to MP3 or whatever version, even from video to audio. Yeah, I could send a list of them. Yes, Audio Converter. Audio MP3. And there's this headliner. Now that's to put graphics to the voice. If you want to share on other platforms, it's called it's Headliner. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And of course, you can also do it on InShot. InShot allows you to do a whole lot of things with your video and audio mm -hmm. together, even if you're not using 
video as in show and um yeah basically those are the three there are so other... many there are actually so many like so many is for you to yeah. just start to get the you get the idea of what what do with your podcast what message you want to share what bit about what do you how do you want to be outlining to go know that who are your audience and all of those things then know which style i think i did it i did a I did a short uh, live video and podcasting at least starting it. So you can, if you're on the NOP group, you can check that video out. There are some basic things that you need to do and how to start. Basically, so you to start and to market, like to promote, to promote your podcast, right? And it's not a work in the park as well as with any business, really. Especially if you're taking it as a business. If you're taking it as a hobby, fine, you can do anything and get away with it. But if you, are, if you have a vision for it to grow, to probably become a source of income, then you have to handle it as a business. And so that means it's beyond just having the voice, having the topic you want to talk, and then just recording and sharing. It's, you have to also think of the marketing, the promotion. If you want to style, what style do you want to do? You want to use interview style like this, panel style like this, or you want to go solo. If you are going solo, what will you be talking about? For how long? I hope it's not. La da la da la da. No, I don't like it. La da la da. It's sweeter than that. It's sweeter than that. You know, I want you to be able to what? Take some, jot something down, and take something okay. away. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Let me let me right. play that one more time. Nice to meeting you all. <laughs> same yeah. here. Same here. We should. It was look a pleasure. Up on, you know.
Say that again. We should hook up on where? I said, I'm talking to Aziza. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Hook up. IG and the others. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. start to follow things. I don't uh-huh. follow, 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 right back. Right back. You know, you, that means you follow, follow. Talk to me. I don't feel like that. I don't feel like that. I don't follow, them, follow, them. Right, no, follow. No, follow. <laughs> Here is a special dedication to everyone who has a vision and is going through things that make you think you won't get there. This song is for you. When I look into the world I see my dream lane But it's far from me now And it's getting farther Many have gone through this lane They have stories to tell Some are good and some are bad But I've made up my mind That my story will be pleasant And pleasing to hear In front of the mirror Wondering if I'll ever make it Cause of things happening around me And then I heard this little voice say to me My child, you're going to make it Yeah.